You want to do this podcasting thing? <laughs> I don't know. It's weird if we don't. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess we may as well keep that going. Oh, the ways we find each other. This episode is made possible by our therapy partners, Dirty B and Picket. Picket! From fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, this is Pod Therapy. Real people, real problems, and real therapists. You can submit your questions anonymously at podtherapy.net or email us at podtherapyguys at gmail.com. And now, broadcasting from the turn, that's Jim. I'm Nick. It's time for some pod therapy. I was thinking that for this Whitney's year's... Whitney's on administrative leave. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. She's been placed on uh, paid leave. Let's... No. It's no, like when no, a cop, no, it's no, like we, a cop we can't afford somebody. That. Jim and I both look at each other like, no, no, no. She goes to the fine. couch. Uh, that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when a cop shoots somebody, we pay them to, to take yeah, a that's break. Right. Yeah. That's right. Well, she did surrender her sidearm and her badge. Yeah. 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 So she's she's on administrative leave. She promised she won't shoot anybody ever again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll that's, see. Well, you never can trust Whitney. Yeah. You know, it's weird. As soon as she loses a sushi bet, you know, which she paid. It was delicious. I it think was. we all enjoyed uh-huh. it. Very good sushi. Sponsor the show, show Goyamon. Uh, very good sushi. But, you know, immediately. Mine was a little salty. Was your salty? But I think it was just Whitney's tears. I think that, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. I personally yeah. enjoyed those. You yeah. got to dip in. I don't know. Yeah. I, it's it's a, a delicacy for you sure. You wanted it. Yeah, yeah you want yeah. it. I'm fine with the salt. goes well yeah. with the soy sauce. Yeah, the soy <laughs> Can I we get, get the just... low-sodium soy sauce. Yeah. They just have Whitney yeah. crying. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> Much better. Much better. <laughs> I yeah, prefer my sodium from She's sadness gone. right after that. So, you know, we enjoyed oh. some good sushi uh, on her dime. I think we had a good night <laughs> as Jacob threatened to order everything a la carte. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good time. I still think your your suggestion, Nick, would have been fucking hilarious. As we sat down, listeners, uh, and we, we had just each of us put in like five rolls. Yeah, we had 20 rolls coming. I mean, we, had, yeah. we just ordered a large amount of food. We just yeah. ordered the menu. Yeah. And, you know, uh, two big old sakis, like, you know, hot sakes, like, we're ready to go. And then after we get on all the orders, Whitney gets up to go to the bathroom, and Nick looks at us, he goes, let's leave. (laughs) (laughs) Just fucking leave. Order an obscene (laughs) amount of food. And then all of it arrived. (laughs) She's like, God fucking damn it. Later. You know what? It changed my mind. I think I just want a McDonald's burger. I think I'm really fine with this. Uh, we did not. Yeah, we did not. We we stayed. Um, but yeah. Well, this, the flaw in that plan was we would have not gotten sushi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 If if Fake somehow flaw. she had to take it to go and like then bring we it to us, still get to eat it. Yeah, that would yeah. be fine. It's funny because Nick has had this fantasy for as long as I've known him that he has repeated in several iterations, but it has to do with. Somebody brings him something. And I think when when I we first told it to me, it was I would bring him coffee every once in a while mm-hmm. in the morning, be like, Oh, hey buddy, I'm at Starbucks, what do you want? And he'd tell me his order. And he just had this fantasy that one day I would hand it to him and he's gonna throw it right in the trash. Yeah. Yeah. Like, thanks. Bam. Maintaining <laughs> yeah. eye contact. Yeah, yeah. I was like, why do you want to do this? He's like, Man, I just I want know. to one day if I didn't I want know. this fucking coffee. I mean, the I'm experiment is it. see how many days in a row Jim will bring you coffee <laughs> yeah. while you throw it away in front of him every time. Yeah. Yeah. Because the mean, answer is more than one. It's more than one. Oh, I, yeah. I could yeah. stretch that for a week. I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Are you gonna throw it away again? No, 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 no. I really want this coffee. You keep throwing it away, man. I know, I know. It's been a bit. You throw it away upside down. Like, I I can't even get it out. But I want coffee today. Okay, well, then I'll I'll grab it. I promise this time I won't take the lid off of it and throw it immediately into a garbage can. So, Jacob, I'll never forget the time that we shared an office and you spilled your coffee. Like, it was a brand new, a brand new, like, full... Oh, Venti Starbucks. Yeah. You sat down on the edge of the table and it just oh, yeah. fell right off uh, on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, dumb. I was like, where's your God now? Jim? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. That, that was the day. That was the chink in my entire uh, theological armor. Yeah. So I was like, they did not tell us this could happen at Liberty University. Yeah. I mean, like childhood cancer or shit like that. Not a problem for the theism no. thing. No. Fucking that was like a six dollar coffee. Yeah. Jesus. And you didn't have a sip of it. I didn't even get one. It's gone. That's how I lost it all. Jacob, what was Nick's uh regular order from Starbucks? So I'd be driving, I'd stop, I go, Hey buddy, what do you want? And he'd say, The huge. Give me the usual. What do you think his drink was? I'll tell you it was a venti, not that okay. that matters. What was Nick's drink? Okay. This Based is 2017, on- 2018. Okay. Based on Nick's general appearance, yeah. 
I'm going to guess uh, flat white. Yeah, you're wrong. Mm. This was mm, fat. No. Appearance This and... was Nick when he was 800 pounds. Oh, Frappuccino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. He, it, this is what led to him ultimately snapping and going hardcore exercise. This was uh, what Ben Stiller uh, pre and post dodgeball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that Ben Stiller yeah. character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's, Nick is... is yeah. Mid dodgeball right yeah. now. Yeah. When you see Nick like yeah. just dry humping a up. pizza, th- that's because back in the day he did not uh, stop himself. He would order a like fucking brownie cookie frappuccino. Yeah, no, 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 What was that no, no. thing? It was the brownie. You no, know, it was a venti ice mocha. Was that it? Yeah, and it would have whipped cream with whip. On top. Yeah, he'd always get the okay. whip and chocolate. He'd like, yeah, put some yeah. chocolate drizzle on there, All right. too. Yeah. It was just like 800 it's calories. It's been drink. years since I've had one of those. I believe you. I used to enjoy an occasional, because we, we have a Starbucks right next door to Absinthe. No, oh. and uh, we used to be pals with the with the owner of that. It was it's an independently owned one, not a oh. not a regular oh, okay. Starbucks one. And uh, so we were pals with the owner, and he would give us an, a really nice discount, basically uh-huh. like a, a steep employee discount. Which brought it down to regular Starbucks prices. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's on the strip. Uh, and so, uh, like once a month, I'd go in there and get like a big frappuccino, okay. you know, a big silly like salted caramel. It's just a milkshake. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's I all mean, it that was. Is. It was not coffee. No, it was caffeinated dessert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it yeah. really was like twelve hundred calories. Yeah. Oh yeah, easily. Yeah. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. with all the fixins on it. Hell yeah. And Matt has talked about uh, when because he used to work at Starbucks. He talked about uh, employees there wouldn't look at the calorie thing when they first released the frappuccinos. Oh, they didn't want And the employees were making them for themselves. Oh. And, like, just blow it up. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was like, oh, shit, the, the small ones are 1,100 calories. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, dude, they have so much shit in them. A flat white is a really good... Have you ever had a flat white? I've never had a flat white. Oh, I like a flat white. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. It, it, what is a flat white? It's just a latte, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. It's really... I don't. I don't really know. Yeah. I don't drink a lot of coffee. Yeah. I've ordered it. I don't drink a lot of coffee other than just like plain coffee. Well, yeah. No, my coffee. my go to now at Starbucks if I go is the it's a venti um, iced uh, sweet cream cold brew. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was really the vanilla sweet vanilla cream cold sweet cream. Cold yeah, that's brew. I like a nice cold yeah. brew. I'll do yeah. those. Yeah, yeah. But man, if you get them, fuck, if you feel those though, dude. Mm-hmm. Those those nitro cold brews. Oh mm-hmm. Jesus, you mm-hmm. get the shakes. Those are those are really heavily caffeinated. I don't get the shakes anymore. No, anymore. It takes a lot to get. Yeah. Not from coffee. No. As he's, he's no. taking a sip of his cold brew and then taking a hit of his cigar. Yeah, yeah, just on the course. Just a Chasing needle, it with a my needle hanging out yeah. of my arm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I got <this> needle. <laughs> you got that rubber band around my yep. elbow. Yeah. It's just hanging there. <laughs> Sir, you're bleeding. Nah, I don't bleed. Fine. <laughs> That's I ain't coffee. Got time to bleed. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, anyway, we're going to jump into the show uh, without Whitney because she's running late. You know, she probably won't even make it. She's running no. a week late. A week late. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Well, at least a week late. Yeah. We'll okay. see if she's here next week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think she's just ghosting us. I think that's what this is. She's just not going to come back. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us for like a that year would be and a half. really shitty, but really funny. I mean, it'd be worth it. Like, I <laughs> yeah. mean, just for that. Like, there's fucking merch. And then like yeah. years from now, people are like, what's up with this Pew Pew Texas shit? Like, what is this referencing? Like, oh, dude, it's, there was an era. <laughs> it yeah. was like a year and a half where there was this chick on the show. It was pretty cool. <laughs> All right. There was this great, this great practical joke got played on. <laughs> <laughs> All three guys took ventriloquism lessons. <laughs> they invented a character that <laughs> just threw voice. It was really impressive. We'll get some great questions for today's show. The first one, I like this one, is about lying about mental health from our buddy, Thunder Cougar Falcon Scoop. Thunder. Thunder. Remember, if you're out there and you're like, man, I want to write a letter to this show and I want it to go right to the top of the queue. Well, you could become a third producer because they do not wait in line. They go right through the entrance uh, to the VIP table, just like Thunder Cougar. What's it's a VIP table? An email form. That's right. (laughs) There's an email. (laughs) Greetings, doctors, counselors, life coaches, and Jim. Yeah. I've had a question on my mind for a while. And speaking of which, fuck this letter. I think that this is what we need to do. End of the okay. show, uh, not end of the ever show. I don't know what our actual end finale will be. Oh, now that'd be a funny joke that we could play on Whitney. Oh, oh my God. She's gone. We can just cancel it. <laughs> we just fucking end the show. <laughs> just shut it down. Just end it. This is it. Last episode. Sorry, we decided to do it out no, of spite. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, I really don't want to do that. 
Got her. No, no, no. Because because I don't want her reaction to be like, all right, that's fine. Oh. <laughs> I oh, think yeah. that would be more hurtful. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you guys ended that thing? Uh, yeah. All right. Well, all right. That was, thanks for doing it. Pew, pew. pew. Oh, pew, good. Texas. I was going to talk to you guys about this. Oh, good. Yeah. So you got my email then. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, end of the season. You know how we do our season finale? You usually goof off. It's around Christmas time. I know how we do that. Yeah. You remember how we've been doing it for almost a decade? Yeah. Um, I think... Jacob and I have a date with Destiny. I think we have a little throwdown so Jim can get his doctorate back. All right, all right. This gives me some time. Are to we going to box? Jacob's doctorate. Yeah, no, 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 I don't want to do any of that. Uh, <laughs> we'll wrestle. No, no, no. Well, okay. We're Warm. getting closer to where I'm, I'm comfortable. Uh, we can Room move. temperature pudding wrestling. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. What's our budget on pudding? Do we? How are we doing, Trevor? What is our pudding I budget? Mean, we have a pudding budget. I've got months to save, so I, <laughs> we yeah, can plan we, for it. Yeah, we, yeah. If we put a little aside every month, we could get. I'm pudding. willing to take out a loan. Yeah, <laughs> I think if we did a pledge drive, yeah. <laughs> first to pin the other or get the tip in with. <laughs> Anyway. Agreed, Jim? Agreed? I mean, we're getting close Agreed? to an agreement. Agreed? <laughs> Agreed? Shake Jacob hands. Is running across. They're shaking it. Sh- hands have hands been shaken. Hands have been shaken. Putting okay. wrestling contest. Putting wrestling. This is the end. Probably the that, end of many this things. This is very doable because we just need a kiddie pool. Yeah. Oh, right? yeah. Those are cheap. Those are cheap. And especially in the winter. Wait, Jim has yeah. a pool. I have a pool. Yeah. We can just fill his pool up with pudding. I haven't used oh, it. Oh, fine. No, that one's really we big. Go. We should get a smaller pool. Oh, we just get a, it, No, we cheaper. just get more pudding. It'll be cheaper on pudding. <laughs> yeah. We can just get a fuck ton of the powder. <laughs> yeah. the, the pudding powder. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't think about go. the powder. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking about the cups. Like right, the right. cups no, are no, ready to no. go. We were all thinking about the cups. But now I'm thinking powder. No, we just pour a bunch of pudding powder into the pool. Yeah, then the hose. Yeah. You know, we hose it down. Do we have to use milk? Do you have to use milk and. Well, I, I don't want, know. I want good pudding. Well, I don't want to. I mean, pudding. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want, want cheap know. pudding. I want the are, are good. Are we pudding. planning on eating the pudding? I, I mean, mean <laughs> no, you don't plan on it, but it's going to happen. <laughs> I mean, there's going to okay. be a lot of pudding. Well, I'm going to go ahead and eat it before you guys get in it. No, yeah. no offense. I also yeah, want it to be strawberry You like that low pudding, sodium pudding? So it just looks like a massacre. <laughs> it just looks horrible. <laughs> All right. So we'll okay. sell this live on pay-per-view. <laughs> this will be on Twitch. It'll be right you can, after. You can uh, pay for the subscription. Pudding Jake Paul pie. and uh, yeah, Tyson. Mike Tyson. Yeah. I think we should counter program. Actually, I think so. I don't think that's, they're the undercard. No, no, no. I think we sell it on the same tickets. <laughs> this is all one bag. I like this pudding fight for the diploma. That's right. What, right. Are, you, yeah, what yeah, are you suggesting like that we do? Uh, I was going to say the trivia PhD. battle. I was going to say trivia battle. Uh, see my how, master's see how, against your doctorate. See, how, I have degrees to lose. See I can lose two more. Uh, but do you see how dumb that idea seems now? Once we've had pudding fight. Well, yeah. Now, well, yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> all right. Fucking we, nothing we compares wrestle, to the pudding fight. And while we're wrestling, you just yell out trivia questions. And then we have okay. to answer those. And whoever answers Oh, it they correctly. get chairs. They get chairs from the crowd. When you answer a question, you get weapons. <laughs> Give him a folding chair. Yes, fuck you. <laughs> Give him that three-foot length of chain. <laughs> and it's a cage match. Yeah. <laughs> just, the price on this is just going up. <laughs> oh, man, we got a budget. <laughs> keeps getting better. Hey, if you're yeah. listening to the show and you're Patreon. not supporting us. Patreon.com <laughs> slash therapy. <laughs> We need pudding. We need a lot of money for this. Okay, there's not going to be a lot of mental health content in the next few months because we're very pudding driven right now. We're if there's if there's not a pudding that. wrestling level on the Patreon by the time uh, yeah. this night is over with, yeah. I'm going to be disappointed in I at least one. Add of you. That I'll the tell you break. right now that would convert. Like all the people that listen for free, that that would be the thing that would move them. Is they're gonna be like, yeah. wait, so I don't have to listen to the show, but there's going to be that pudding shit, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Take my money. Take yeah. all the monies. I don't care anymore. Getting out my credit card right now. Yeah, I'll swipe it. Twice. No, I'm I'm all in favor of doing a little end of year SmackDown. I think so. I think yeah, we, we got time to build it up. We got time to make uh, to decide the rules. I don't know if it's trivia though. I don't know. Well, we got to do something verbal, you know. So it's yeah, got to do something. something but I, right. I just don't know if it's trivia. All right, I'm open to suggestions. Yeah, yeah. I'm I, don't open have, suggestions. I don't have a better idea. Trivia is winning right now. Yeah, because we don't have another competitive. Obviously, thing. we're going to do pudding wrestling. Or it could trivia's, be trivia is winning. <laughs> fill in uh, the song. You know that 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 game show that was hosted by Wayne Brady for a minute, where they play a song and they pause it, and you have to fill in the rest. That could be a good one. Nah. While pudding fighting? Yo, yes. Okay. Why All do you right. ask dumb just... questions? <laughs> of course. All Otherwise, right. what are we doing? <laughs> the point is really to get to the pudding thing. I mean, this yeah. also getting my doctorate thing is a bonus. Like, I, I would like it back. I want the pudding wrestling more. All right. So. All right. Also, I, you said red pudding? 
Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. You got to get the vanilla pudding, the French vanilla. Look, if you're going to wrestle in pudding, tapioca. <laughs> oh, okay. So, ironically, Just right? Because people don't actually eat tapioca. Flan. Pudding. I used to love oh, a flan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. Flan. Just wrestling. dump a bunch of flan into a swimming pool. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to do that, let's just do creme brulee. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. yeah. Okay. A nice, a nice, yeah. A nice, yeah. nice crust nice right over the top. <laughs> First, the one first to fall, to fall through. through. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the bit. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna put a plank on the fucking pool, and we both get like those huge gladiator sticks, and it's just hitting oh. until somebody goes through the crust. I don't hate the idea of oh. doing a, a pugil stick contest. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've got it. I think that was it. We landed on a great answer. Yeah, yeah, this is gonna be fine. So we have months to plan this. We'll get the deeds sorted. But pay per view, <laughs> pa- okay. Patreon.com slash therapy. Uh, we will live broadcast. Jim fighting for his doctorate back. And that's all the time we have for Thunder Cougar Pocket Scoop. Thanks for the letter, Thunder, and thanks for sponsoring the show. Uh, Goodbye. (laughs) Fine. Fine. (laughs) All right. Lying about mental health. Ask your question, Thunder Cougar Falcon (laughs) Scoop. Fine, since you give us money. I've had a question on my mind for a while, and it's about time that I ask. I think it would be good to hear some professional opinions about it. How do people approach other people who have either a substance use disorder or mental diagnosis, but may lie about it from time to time to gain something? Does the approach change when the person is trying to weaponize their problem to gain something, compared to a subtle cry for help? That something to gain could be anything from a ride to attention or even material things. I'm sure a simple and effective way of handling it would be to tell them to stop lying. But what if it's not that simple? I'm sorry for making the question so vague, I'm not even sure how to ask this. I won't go into details, but I'll say that this question comes from a friend we'll call Sarah, who is diagnosed with schizophrenia. Sarah is an awesome person who would occasionally hear voices in her head and have harmful thoughts. Thankfully, she had a good support system and an amazing boyfriend who was always patient with her. Fast forward to some years later, where me and my friends could have been noticing a certain pattern. Let me first say that we've all known Sarah for years, and we know she has schizophrenia. We don't think she was trying to do anything bad or gain anything from lying, and we all cared for her. But whenever we would have parties and get-togethers, it seemed to us that she would coincidentally hear voices in her head when it looked like the boyfriend was getting more attention than her. Every time. The two of them would always leave to another room and come back after a while and things were good, but it was something multiple people had picked up on. Again, we don't think she had ill intent and we were concerned for her. It seemed like she may have started this behavior after a traumatic incident had happened that affected all of us, and we thought it was a way for her to handle the newfound burden. It's also possible that we were just wrong. As more people noticed, we got together to talk about how we wanted to talk to Sarah about it, but we weren't sure how to approach it. It seemed a wrong time to bring it up at a random moment. Some wanted to strike while the iron was hot, but the question on everyone's mind was, what if we're wrong and she's really hearing voices at that time? She could need help and we're turning her away. Or, what if it's true, but we bring it up when she's not lying? We eventually settled on trying to bring it up to the boyfriend. I wasn't there to talk with him, but it didn't go well for the people who did. Really? The boyfriend couldn't believe all of us thought this about Sarah and threatened to end friendships with everyone if we brought it up again, so we left it. Nothing major ever came from it, but this was always a moment in my life that stuck with me. Has anyone in the pod therapy crew ever had to deal with something like this? How is the best way to approach something like this? It'd be great to hear some opinions and possibly experiences from doctors and counselors about this. And Jim, too. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Fuck you, Thunder. (laughs) Thanks for everything. Even when I see them coming, they're still funny. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Thanks for everything y'all do. It was great to see Jim, Nick, and Jacob again. And finally, meeting Whitney. Pew, pew, Texas. See you at the next Scoop Fest. Thunder what? Cougar Falcon Scoop. That was fun hanging out with Thunder. Thunder. That was a good time. This is Thunder where you didn't know it was Thunder Cougar Falcon Scoop for like yeah. the longest time. Like yeah. you guys just sit there bullshitting and then yeah, you're like. Yeah, we're just sitting there talking. So anyway, what's your name, man? Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> he's like, dude, I've met you like 10 times. <laughs> it's like. 
<laughs> Shut up, and then mom. Afterwards, <laughs> afterwards, I was like, oh, yeah, I do remember. Yeah. Well, no, don't was, show up when we're drunk. Uh, make time. friends with us when we're not. Good time. Okay. I would suggest we handle this question in two different uh, avenues. Pudding? Pudding. Okay, three different avenues. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sarah, like, dealing with that one situation and then the thing overall. Okay. Yes. Specific Agreed. and general. Yeah. I like And pudding. All right, so let's talk specific. I'll Sarah. take the pudding. I'll okay. take that angle. Fair. <laughs> we all, you didn't have to say it. We all knew. Thanks. Yeah. I appreciate um, that you defer to my expertise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, the thing with, uh, specifically with Sarah. Okay. So, uh, was there you, a you chance that up... that conversation ever could have gone well? I don't no. see it. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, here's... boyfriend maybe, but he was pissed. So, here's yeah, the interesting like... thing with that is their observation was very good. Yeah. And their observation could be 100% correct. Yeah. And they could be 100% wrong as to why they're right. correct. Right. Okay. Uh, because, yes, it could be very possible that she is noticing he is getting more attention than her. Mm-hmm. Right. And she is experiencing uh, an increase in auditory hallucinations. Right. And those two could be Causal, causal, causal. It could be a cause linked. and effect. Cause yeah. and effect. Yeah. yeah, but it doesn't necessarily mean that she is manifesting that. No, or she is lying about it. Because what we do know is that stress can yes. oftentimes increase the likelihood or the intensity yes. of auditory hallucinations. So if if an environment or a situation like that causes her stress, the stress could be triggering that. Yes. So it may not be something that she is lying about or making up, but you could be right in that it is a causal link. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, the specific of could Sarah be somehow influencing the experience or can the, can the environment and context influence the voices? Mm-hmm. Yes. Could Sarah... Let's go with the alternative that Sarah is seeking attention and that there are... Now, again, we like Sarah, but could there be scenarios... Is she a Patreon? uh, No. (laughs) I like her less. All right. You know, you want respect? Pay for it. That's how this show works. Uh, But no, you know, like, you think about it globally. I think that I have seen scenarios where somebody is... (sighs) you know, kind of using the diagnosis they're going, that they're dealing with in life as an identity. And, and they're sort of wearing that as a hat Mm -hmm. and it comes up and we've talked about this off air before it's come up. Yeah. 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 We've known people that do that. I've had patients that do that. And you know, that's interesting, right? Because part of the way they're dealing with it sometimes is kind of turning it into a nice thing or, or like broadcasting it. Um, and and that that's curious, right? Because sometimes I think that it's off putting for other people, and they're kind of thinking like, "This is sort of obnoxious, just because you're sort of look at me about this." And I'd feel like that if you were just you know a person who had an interesting backstory and just constantly yeah. brought it up. Like it just feels very look at me. And then sometimes it's kind of like off putting because it's like, well, you seem to be celebrating it and sort of like trying to make this something you're proud of when it causes an awful lot of people an awful lot of suffering, and mm-hmm. that doesn't probably seem great. And then there's this other thing of like, well, there's some people that are insecure and it's like they're using this to make themselves interesting so that you'll talk to them about like, oh, you you have a you know, generalized anxiety disorder or whatever. Like, can you tell me more about that? Like, yeah, sure. Let me tell you about it. It's like it's about them. Mm-hmm. So there are definitely scenarios where this happens. Or we don't hear anything about your mental mental health right until you're getting reprimanded at work and then we hear now about we're it. hearing yeah. about it yeah why yeah. are you late for the third fucking time uh-huh. yeah depression yeah. Yeah. Like, okay that's like, right uh, i want to be sensitive but at the same time it's dangerous. so Becky yeah. has three kids that she puts on the bus every morning and makes it to work on time right yeah you've got depression you find your way i yeah. i believe you but yeah, I need you to be at work. Your work, work starts still at nine. Starts. Yeah, come with your depression. Yeah. yeah, put your depressed ass in the chair. So you know this is a real thing, and and I think it's thunder. It's such a hard thing to to manage because when you look at it, I think it's tricky because what's the right move? And I think as a general rule, the safest move is just to sort of not reward that that kind of stuff with attention. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you can kind of just starve it with disinterest. And But unfortunately, any social situation you're in, you might have to hear this person off in the corner trying to hold court right. and talk about their mental health or whatever's going on, and, and now they're getting their attention. 
And I don't know how to manage that. I mean, I think it could be off And there are, there are appropriate times to have those discussions yeah. socially as well. Mm-hmm. It comes up. Yeah. You know, it comes up. And, like, I kind of look at it like, well, what kind of damage is this doing, right? Like, okay, this person, maybe this is one of the only things they feel comfortable talking about. Maybe I am just seeing a very insecure person right. uh, use this to feel interesting and powerful for the day. Great. You got it. You were right. That's what's happening. Mm-hmm. Now what? Mm-hmm. There's well, no a good reason time to interfere. bring up imposter syndrome to that person right. and have <laughs> yeah. a discussion about that. Now's the time to bring that up. Yeah. I mean, you know, I kind of just think about it like just take a, a, a piece of neutrality on that and say, you know what? There's no benefit to interfering with that. If I'm going to confront the friend on it, I would want to confront from a position of concern to be able to say to my friend, look, I love you, Sarah. And when I see this, I'm not always sure how I should respond to it. Is this you having a mental health emergency, which I think requires my full attention? I, and then I feel guilty enjoying myself at the social occasion mm-hmm. and relaxing and having drinks with friends. Because if you're truly in crisis, I'm uncomfortable enjoying myself now. I don't feel good right. ignoring you. I, I feel like I need to bring 100% of my attention to you. But if this is something that is contextual and maybe in the moment you're sort of broadcasting it at a, at a seven when really it's at a three and just there's a need to kind of be attended to, but it's not a crisis. Can you whisper that to me behind the scenes that I kind of know that I can continue enjoying myself and that you're not going to feel betrayed or I'm doing you an injustice? Also, there are plenty of people out there because you're describing social situations and I'm, I'm making an assumption here, but I'm, I'm assuming that there's probably some alcohol involved as well in a lot mm-hmm. of these social sh- situations. There are a lot of people, we all know them, uh, who when they have a few drinks... They enjoy being the center of attention. Right. Yeah. They become louder, more boisterous. A lot yeah. of a lot of their qualities that are always there kind of magnify. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it can be as simple as something like that. Yeah. It, it's you know, I I always have this. This is always going on in my head. Uh, you know, I've had a I've had a, a few beers now, and my my tongue is a little looser than it usually is. Right. And now I'm just talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's a damn good point. Yeah. And maybe that's you know a little bit of a cusp thing too. Which is, are you, are you not necessarily lying about it? Are you not necessarily exaggerating about it? But are you just in your cups? Yeah. You know, and is that a part of this too? Or the context that you're right. just socially happening? And there's a lot of layers mm-hmm. to it. I think for me, if I'm in this situation, the first thing I'm looking at is who am I to this individual Good and point. what is my role and what are the expectations mm-hmm. that I have? Because that changes a lot. Yeah. You know, depending on what my role is. If this is just a friend, yeah, then I'm kind of taking the same approach that Jim brought up as far as like, okay, yeah, I, I can, you know, if I feel like this is getting a little overblown, I like the, the philosophy of starving it yeah. from attention, you know. Yeah, and reward just, it with right. silence and disinterest. Yeah, just But you brought up a really it. important point, which is that people with uh, schizophrenia and, and who are ex- experiencing psychotic features as mm-hmm. well, that can be provoked contextually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that is like if a person were to see their partner talking to other people and enjoying themselves, and voices are almost always persecutory. They're they're not just telling you the weather forecast. They're not these benign things in the background that just usually say, like, oh, I think it's gonna be hot tomorrow. Like, okay, thanks, voice. You know, you should have mm-hmm. corona. Okay, bye, voice. Like it's not benign. And they're usually gonna say mean things, and it might be like, hey, that person's gonna have sex with your boyfriend. You know, that person's going to hurt your boyfriend. That person over there that's talking to your boyfriend is secretly going to hurt him. And like that, that can really start to get to you because you're witnessing all this attention. And the interesting thing, too, with the voices, with the auditory hallucinations and the things that you're hearing is you don't necessarily even have to believe them. But it's just the overwhelming, oh, overwhelming. effect yes. of all of them constantly hitting you. Um, you know, using that example that, oh, they're going to hurt my boyfriend or she's trying to sleep with my boyfriend. Right. Sarah may not actually believe that, right. but there's only so much of that you can really hear before it finally starts to irritate and you. And it's distressing. And, you yeah. know, this really circles back around to another question we've gotten years ago, which had to do with people wearing a diagnosis that isn't true, mm-hmm. you know, identifying as a diagnosis. And this question of like, should I challenge them? Like, I feel like they're they're inaccurate and they're broadcasting this. They're making this a social thing. And like, I feel like I should correct them or something to that effect, which I think is in alignment with Thunder's question of like, there's a there's a, a hint of doubt, you know, and like, mm-hmm. I just don't know how what's the best friend posture to take if I'm a pro mental health person. And if you're wearing this or exaggerating these symptoms in the moment, 
that's a disservice to the greater good of mental health. And like, I want to be an advocate and like, I don't know what, what side of the fence to be on. And I think the general advice we've always taken is take a posture of believing the person Mm -hmm. and just take a posture of comfort. And I, yeah, I agree with that, especially in the sense that like, I don't, I would much rather err on the side of believing them than not believing them. Because even by believing them, even if they are, um, kind of, uh, ex, uh, making it bigger, exaggerating yeah. it, mm-hmm. even if they are doing that, there's a reason why they're doing it. something's still wrong. Right. 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 And so it may not be the actual diagnosis. It may be something else, but something there is causing a problem. Um, and that person is still suffering in some way. Now, again, it kind of goes back to what role do you play and is it your job to intervene in that? Right. You know, um, you know, given the example of, you know, this is a friend versus like, okay, if I'm this person's supervisor at work and it's impacting their ability to function, well, now I've got a different role to play. And so now I kind of have to intervene in a different way. That's exactly right. And I'm glad you brought that up because I think the other half of this question is the implication that if a person is exaggerating or wearing these symptoms, it could be disruptive to the occasion or disruptive Mm -hmm. to what's going on how much of that do we suffer at some point? Is there some kind of pushback? And I think you nailed it. Like the variable there is what is your function exactly in this? Are you the host? Is this person causing a scene to the point where your guests are uncomfortable and you need to discontinue the party? Are you the boss? Are you know, what, what is your role? Boyfriend has a role and boyfriend, I think can talk to girlfriend, Sarah about this question of like, Hey, when I'm enjoying myself, you reel me back in really hard with a crisis move. Like you, you, you jerk me out of enjoying myself mm-hmm. with these people and I kind of have to attend to you or I'm a bad boyfriend. Let's talk about that. And if it's not a problem for boyfriend, should it be if a he's problem like, for yeah, friend? I, this is part of the deal. We've talked about it privately. Yeah. I get it. I expect it. And I reel her in. Yeah. Fine. There's also... Not a chance. Like having this conversation with the boyfriend, there's not a chance that that conversation goes well yeah. because there are two options there. Mm-hmm. One, it goes the way that it did. Boyfriend defends girlfriend uh, and says, "No, you're just way off base, and uh, you're making an unfounded accusation." Yeah. The other option there is just as bad, but from the other direction. Oh. The other option is, yeah, she does that, and then you look at him and go, "Like, why the fuck is my friend dating this douchebag right. that just completely threw her under the bus? Right. Yeah. She's she's just crazy, man. She yeah. throws it around and you're like, ew. Right. Okay. Yeah, that, that conversation, the reason yeah. I laughed at that conversation earlier when you were describing it yeah, is like, see there's road. not a single good path. That, 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 like, that yeah. doesn't end with the boyfriend going, oh, you know, I've never thought about that, but yeah. maybe you're right. Let's sit down and have a really in-depth conversation maybe. about this. I feel this. like we've all learned something yeah, today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the only way I could see myself... And knowing is half the battle. G.I. <laughs> <laughs> Joe. I feel like the only way I could see myself doing this is one-on-one. Yeah. Like, pull... And, and, you know, being a good friend. Telling everybody else to get the fuck out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just one-on-one and just saying, hey, brother, none of my business between you and me. Sometimes I notice Sarah seems to do this when you're on fire. When yeah. you're having a good time and you're taking over the room and, you know, I just, I care about both of you. I love her to pieces. Um, but I, I also want you to feel safe that if that frustrates you or you have your doubts about that, I'm your friend too. And if you feel like you need to confide in me about that or you want to talk about it, I just want you to know that I, I've also noticed that and uh, I'll leave it there. Mm-hmm. Great. And if your buddy's like, ah, yeah, man, that's really frustrating. It puts me in a pickle. You know, I don't know what to do, and I, I don't want to seem like a bad boyfriend. And right. I'm kind of on fire, but I don't want to seem selfish, but yeah, she kind of reels me in, and I've no. okay, great. Now you're just being there for your buddy. Neither of you can really change that behavior of Sarah's, but if anybody could, it be boyfriend. And boyfriend would say, you know, we need to talk about what's, you know, crying wolf, right? If you're crying wolf to, to reel me in whenever I'm on fire, or I'm having a good time, um, you're, yeah, you could, you could risk this problem where eventually I do not believe you whenever there's a real crisis and you really need my attention and it could begin to hurt the relationship. Mm-hmm. So I like Thunder's point where there's a, there's a lane for loving, concerned friends who like both of these people to notice it and, and take, you know, a curious approach to this and think, huh, what's the standard here? What's going on? Um, 
And, but I do think that their posture probably is just, hey, look, we love you. We're here for you. We always believe you. We always take you seriously. Um, we do notice there are very specific conditions that seem to provoke this. Um, we're going to always assume the best and assume that nobody suffers uh, willingly. And so it's going on and we're just here to support you on it. I think that's probably the best posture. But I will take a bit uh, to, to explain to the world. We have a diagnosis code that we use and a special phrase that we use um, in clinical parlance that describes fucking faking it because there are people that fucking fake it. And they will come in and they will tell us all about their symptoms um, so they can get a diagnosis and go off and get some pills or, or whatever it is, whatever their reasons are. And there are times whenever we actually have to use this code or we'll be talking to each other and we'll say, oh, what's the diagnosis on this patient? And we'll say malingering. And that just means they're faking it like they for one reason or another, whether they mean to deceive or whether they are self-deceiving, they are malingering. They are cosplaying as having this mental illness. And we can tell that you don't actually have it, but you want us to think that you do. And so, yes, there are times that that happens and it's unfortunate. And, you know, I think that even when that happens, we're not antagonistic to that person because I think a therapist still looks at that person and thinks, you know, there's a lot going on in your life that, that you feel like you got to wear these clothes, that you really want to wear this mask. Um, that still tells me that there's a lot of brokenness. There's a lot of hurt. Uh, you need this for some other reason of validation or something. That's still a on. thing. <laughs> so clearly, you still need therapy. So you're in the right place. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you've ever been diagnosed with malingering, uh, which you probably wouldn't have seen, <laughs> it's in the chart. Uh, that means that we thought you were faking. <laughs> it's very rare. We don't use that diagnosis very often. Um, but yeah, sometimes you will see it. And so there actually is a word for that mm -hmm. in clinical parlance. Great question, Thunder. Uh, appreciate you, uh, even though you insulted me twice in the same fucking letter. You know? I don't see how that's an insult, yeah, Ooh. Mr. Well, Jobin. Uh, I'll see you in the pudding, all right? <laughs> we'll see. We'll just see. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. All we'll right. We'll see. Yeah. Oh, we're going to see. We're going to fucking see. Oh, we're going to see. But the Thunderdome. Oh, <laughs> it's going to be seen. Can you please dress up like as wrestlers? Of like, course. I want, I want outfits. What are we? I you want... know, amateurs? Of course. Spandex? Yeah, we're doing the whole fucking thing. But then it's going to get real uncomfortable because we're just going to fight. Yeah. <laughs> it's just going to be a real Jesus, fucking fight. Jesus, they're really fucking yeah. like, going. <laughs> we're going to be hurt by the end of this. There's lots of pudding everywhere. Um, someone's, Fine. Someone's going to win. <laughs> but pudding and blood. Going to be injured as, as as Jacob is bashing me over the head with my diploma. Yeah, <laughs> now you want it back, bitch. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that'll be his signature move. It's gonna be he bad. Hits people with Jim's diploma. Uh, I'm counting on it. <laughs> it's gonna be really uncomfortable and difficult. To Tune watch. in to pay per view <laughs> patreoncom slash therapy The end of the year finale. Probably end of the show. Somebody's going to jail. Somebody's going to the hospital. <laughs> Check it out. Patreon. And somebody's <laughs> feelings are getting hurt. <laughs> and somebody's going to eat a lot of fucking pudding. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about self-destructive self-care. You're listening to Pop Therapy. Today's episode is brought to you by Jake Schneider, Judy Schneider, Leon Kassab, Carolyn Albert, Sandy Scoop, Sarah Smith, Mike Helm, Darren Cunningham, Matt and Lisa Tangerman, and Mrs. Hot Dog Scoop. Would you like to sponsor the show? Become a Patreon, Patreon supporter at patreon.com slash therapy be and sign up to become a Thera producer. All right. Trivia this week. Auction items selling price. Ooh, I like this. Okay. Well, price so, is right, so the, the price that they went for. Price that it went for. Oh, okay. 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 I will give you... I'm going to give you what it was. I'll also give you the year that it was auctioned off. Okay. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, and you got to tell me the price. Now, here's the thing. Mm. There's only two of you competing. Yeah. Okay, so if we did Price is Right rules, this is going to be a boring-ass game. Yeah. All right, so what you you're going to do, it. you're both going to give a number, whoever's closest. You All can right. go over. Okay. Whoever's right. closest. I like that. And I put together this nice Excel spreadsheet so I can just type in the numbers and it will automatically you tell me. You fucking coded an Excel spreadsheet? It's right to, here. Wow. Yes. Buddy. Here we go. You're the <laughs> buffest nerd I know. Thank you. <laughs> By a wide margin. <laughs> All right. Star Trek actor William Shatner's kidney stone. Oh my god! In two thousand six, are you kidding? Me? All right, Jacob, you go first. Oh my god! Okay, wow, his dick nugget. That's crazy. Kidney stone, two thousand six. Used to be in a band called Dick Nugget. <laughs> <laughs> that was my nickname in high school, man. <laughs> Shatner's kidney stone was their single. <laughs> 
I'm going to say oh, Shatner's kidney stone. Hundred thousand dollars. Oh my god! In two thousand six. Yeah, oh, you're probably not. Two thousand six. I'll bet you're real fucking close. Okay. Jim. All right. I'm gonna reach for the under, and I'm gonna go ahead, and I'll, I'll give him a gentleman's berth. I'm gonna say fifty five thousand. That's, that's great. Because so I fucking because I think money. mine is low. I feel I have a feeling that mine is low. That's low. Yeah. Okay. I feel like the real we'll see, number. We'll see, but I have a feeling that mine's low. If I was All voting right. my conscience, okay, I'm playing fifty five thousand out of gamesmanship. Yeah. If I was voting my conscience, ten thousand. Okay, but I'm gonna. That's go what you'd pay. I'm for. gonna take the fifty five to get a little bit extra on this yeah. thing. Okay. Jim is off by thirty thousand. Jacob is off by seventy five thousand. Oh, oh, it was low. low. Twenty five thousand so dollars. Oh, I'm disappointed in everybody for a dick involved. Nugget. <laughs> way too much. I'm, I'm just okay. sad for everyone involved. Uh, somebody got a steal on that. Point wow. to Jim. Yeah, All right, here we go. Damn. Pope Francis's Harley Harley Davidson motorcycle. The Pope had a Harley. He did. Damn. In 2013. Wow. What did that go for? Oh, shit, I have to remember what I paid for that. <laughs> Jim, you're up first. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess a Harley out of the box is already going to be, I don't know, 50, 60. So. Well, it's what kind of Harley, too? Oh, is it like yeah. a fat boy? Is it a little sports? It's a Pope Mobile like, Harley. You have a big bubble on it. Yeah, yeah. 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 What about yeah. this didn't you get? <laughs> <laughs> I, I imagine know, some kind of like Jetsons Clearly. version with right. like a glass the there you go. bubble yeah. around it. It's a gerbil ball, basically. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, it's just uh, a Harley in a gerbil ball. <laughs> just oh, that'd around. be so loud. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd die, you know, of the exhaust. All right, so I'm going to say Harley out of the box. I'm guessing it's 50, 60K. I'm going to say the Pope's Holy Harley. <laughs> That's a cool quarter mil without breaking a sweat. That's a global bidding contest. Quarter mil. Give me 250,000. 250. 250,000. Quarter million is 250. 250. You're correct. <laughs> yeah, he, he's is. terrible at math. Unless I, he's I got would an like Excel a point spreadsheet yeah. for yeah. knowing that. That's yeah. why I have an Excel spreadsheet, right. so yeah. I don't have to That's do right. math. No so you're math. at 250. I'm taking quarter mil. All right, I'm going to go under because the people bidding on this are fucking tithing 10% oh, of their income point. already. Good point. <laughs> yeah. They're broke. So they're already, they're already, they're starting at yeah. 90%. Yeah. The Holy Harley like, is out of their range. Pre-tax, yeah. they're starting at 90%. Good point. Yeah. Really good point. They all have at least 12 kids because they love those fucking disciples. <laughs> That's right. Got a got full Catholic. Yeah, yeah. Because if you're buying the Pope's Harley, yeah. you're all fucking in. Yeah. All right. You have like a reliquary in yes. your home. Yes. You are. All- I knew, I knew Catholics <laughs> growing up. Look, because Louisiana has got some serious Catholics it does. that had things like pieces of bone of saints. Okay, and yeah, things like the that. relics. And, yeah, the yeah. relics. That's yeah, the yeah, word. Yeah, 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 yeah. They they had they had uh, well reliquaries. That's, that's, that's it. Literally yeah, the word yeah, I just yeah. said. Yeah, uh, that's right. Showcase for the relics. Yeah, they yeah. had like you know popes or you know uh, saints bones oh, on yeah. display uh, in their home. Yeah, it was a whole thing. Uh, that's so real Catholicism. I'm gonna be at pre Vatican two bitches. I'm gonna be at one fifty. About oh. one fifty. Oh, you're you're low, buddy. You're yeah. low. You I'm underestimate also, the power of the Pope. Uh, I, might. I might. I often have before. <laughs> this is true. The I, Pope like when ball. I got in that when I got in that pudding wrestling match with the Pope, <laughs> I really underestimated him. He can fucking yeah. throw. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that hat is heavier than it looks. <laughs> it's where he keeps his crowbar. Uh Jacob, I, I liked you showing your work, uh, but you are closer to zero than you are to the actual number. Oh, wow. So we're both low? $327,000. Wow. Point goes to Jim. Damn. All, All right. right. Last one for this round. Ooh. Benito Mussolini's Alfa Romeo. Oh, shit. Sold in 2015. Oh, what year, what, what wow. year was the car? Alfa I mean, Romeo is a car. 19 correct. what? Fucking... 30? Well, it have been like I think it was like a thirty-five. Or okay, something like yeah, that. okay. And it was sold what year? It was sold in twenty fifteen. I'm surprised it was in one piece, dude. They they ripped everything that that man touched. And oh, so that all means it. it was sold to like a weird collector. Then at that point, I don't think you're a bad person for buying it. 
Like, if you buy Hitler's car in I don't think you're a bad person for buying it. I believe a bad person might have bought it, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I believe they're they may in have the already contest. been a bad yeah, yeah, yeah. person. Yeah. They're and, in the and, eBay and, lobby. Yeah, yeah, they are bidding. It. Yeah, yeah. They, they are think, also bidding. Like, like yeah. if somebody just bought the car, they were like, oh, yeah, I'm interested in historical cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I bought Mussolini's car. Yeah. I go, great. I don't know that that's the only person bidding. Right, right, right. <laughs> I have a World War II museum. I, I buy artifacts. I populate Fine. the museum. Great. He's also in the bidding contest. Yeah, yeah. And there's just a fascist in there. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who's like, we need this for religious uh, reasons. Man, I have no idea what a 1930s or 40s Alfa Romeo would go for in the first I mean, you got to figure that's already pretty valuable, right? I 100-year-old uh, car, man. I mean, uh, that, there's value that. There's, there is. I don't know if it's six figures of value. Oh, boy. You no, know, just the car by itself. Without, okay. without the provenance. You, you just think 100-year-old Alfa Romeo. Yeah. Let's assume it's in great condition. I mean, it better be a fucking tip-top mint condition. Let's assume it drives. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I'll guess... Man, I've been wrong on every single piece of logic that I've had in this game so far. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go above where my guess was going to be. Okay. I'm okay. going to go 125K. I think that's low. Okay. I think... Based on uh, history of this game, you should go with your instinct <laughs> Thank and, you. and not pay any attention Given to Given the Pope Mobile, we yeah. know how much Italian people are willing to pay it's true. for some famous uh, vehicles. So I'm going to say, I don't know if it outsells the Pope Mobile. I don't know. The, the Holy Harley, I feel like, is going to do better. I want it to do better than fucking Benito Mussolini's car. But the historical value is very high. Also... The world we live in. Yeah, we live in a fucking weird place. You want yeah. the Pope Mobile to go for more. I want but... it to. Yeah, especially that Pope. I like that Pope. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go half a million dollars. Give me five hundred thousand on the board. Ooh. I think the historical significance is important. And okay. I also think you have to outbid the fascists. And that's something Jacob's not calculating. Yeah. The rich guy has to flex and outbid the fascists because if the fascists get it, it's going to be weird. And if they get it, it goes in a museum next to a plaque that says fascism yeah. is bad. So what did what are you bidding on that? Half a mil. Okay. Give me 500. All right, you bet a quarter mil. No, I'm, no, at, he, I'm at 125. Again, he's at 125. Still not a quarter. Nick, you're really <laughs> fucking bad at this. Do you realize a million <laughs> I want to be very clear that was not a bit that Nick was doing. No. <laughs> He is grabbing no, at his face right bit, now. Guys, guys, uh, uh, yeah. I know, man. Uh, I got you guys. So uh, good. Got all right, you, all right. you pudding fuckers. Okay. All right. <laughs> before, before Nick divulges this, okay. Jim, yeah. I have a wager proposition for you. Oh, before yes. before Nick divulges this information. Okay. All right. All right. I like if this. Ooh. I'm betting on Jim's answer being correct over mine, I think if Jim's answer is correct, I get three points. If Jim's answer is wrong, if I if I am correct, if I'm closer, Jim gets five points for this round. Interesting. I don't understand how gambling works, and this is confusing because he's betting on my bet. I'm betting that yes. you are right. I'm betting against myself you, because I have been just wrong, so wrong, you're saying, wrong. Across I think Jim the board will get here. this, so I'm willing to add another layer to the bet. That's right. And the extra layer is I'm betting against my own my own interest here. You want three so, points if I'm right. Yeah, if I'm right, I get your three points and you're at zero. So at the end okay. of the round, I would have three points. You would have zero points. Yeah. If you're right, or if you if, if you, you uh, if right. you win the bet and I and I said the correct answer, yeah, then you have five points at the end of this round and I have zero. points. I'm gonna say no because I think your bet is or your your guess is fucking dumb. Okay, okay, I think it's really dumb. Right? I'm not gonna throw away okay. five points right. when I think I'm gonna get one and I'm just gonna keep walking away with this lead. Okay, all right, no deal. Okay, Send Jim, that case back. You are way off. Oh, fuck. Damn but, it. And you're still closer to the right answer. Oh! That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> oh, no. Jim, you were $1.6 million off. <laughs> Holy shit. That car sold for 2.1 mil. Oh, now I want to know what kind of Alfa Romeo this was. Oh. Was this like a custom Alfa Romeo? It was a fascist Alfa Romeo. <laughs> that is all that mattered. It was just This was an that. Alfa Romeo <laughs> that was bad to its people. That was it. It was just really Italian. <laughs> nationalist oh, oh my goodness 2.1 million dollars wow uh -huh. god damn it's a lot of money 
I, you know what? I wanted to live in a world where the Holy Harley was going to fetch a better price. We don't live in that world. Who bought it? Yeah, now I need to know that. I don't know. Yeah, no, fucking actually, look I'm, that up. I'm the guy that up. owned the Imperial Palace. Right. Yeah. Now I need to know was it bought as a bit? Like, like what's like, going did on? Zach Baggins buy it? Yeah. 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 It's haunted, haunted museum? by Mussolini. Then it's going to make that money. That's an investment. That two point one is going to make triple that. Let's see who bought. Okay, Mussolini's this was a 1939 car. Alfa Romeo. Okay. Oh yeah, I found it. Oh yeah, 2.1 million. Who owns Benito? Uh, completely restored Alfa Romeo 6C. Ooh. It is the type of car it was. Right. It's a pretty car. It's a very nice car. Wow, you guys sound fascist right now. I, There's it's no a difference. Car. Nope. I I hate it. I think <laughs> that it looks like it's prejudice. Hey, and uh, I don't I don't care for. Can it. look good. Nope. Yeah. Hugo Boss designed their costumes. <laughs> Hugo Boss. <laughs> <laughs> also, when you call the Nazis uniforms costumes, they get real pissed off. They don't, they don't care for that. <laughs> yeah. They do not They don't care. like that at all. Okay. So we'll need to figure out uh, who actually owns this uh, car at this point. But it was an Alfa Romeo is... 6C Sport Berlina, Ber, Berlinita. Berlinita. Yeah. Berlinita. I believe is Maybe. how that's pronounced because it is Italian. Reservoir. Reservoir dogs. <laughs> okay. While these two idiots are looking this up, I'm going to read our next question. Self-destructive self-care. Hi, Nick, Jacob, Whitney, and Chinstrap. Oh, it was the car that <laughs> Mussolini was trying to get away in. <gasps> oh. oh. Oh, that's information we didn't have. You buried oh. the lead. Yeah, that is... They that were trying, like, deeps. Mussolini and his wife, I guess, Ooh. were trying to get into Switzerland oh. in this car. They oh, were stopped the at the border. Escape car? That's like how much there is are not at, Maybe not at the border, but they were stopped at an Italian resistance roadblock oh, yeah. in the northern Italian region of Dungo. Yeah. Mm. So this makes me wonder if Holy o- shit. O.J. Simpson's white Bronco, was his mistress. I, what would that go for? That's oh, a historical sold. piece. It's sold at some point. It's, it's sold to someone. It's definitely out there. Now I need to know that number. Yeah. I, I'll bet it's going to be less than Benito Mussolini's. But uh, yeah. not as much, not surprisingly well, but OJ less. OJ had so many more rushing yards. Yeah, Is that really true. fair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Benito conquered half the world, but the fucking juice, you know, just couldn't be stopped. He also, as far as number of people killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, much Mussolini. Lower. Yeah, yeah. yeah OJ takes... really looks like the oh, Pope compared to Mussolini. It looks like the White yeah. Bronco might currently be for sale. Oh, shit. Can we get a bid uh, on as that? As of April 2024. Okay, Patreons. Come on, guys. There's... We need money. <laughs> it's for a good cause. I swear to God, we're still going to do the pudding. How thing. many t-shirts do we need to sell? <laughs> we, I mean, at we some will point, sell we that wrestle in pudding in the Bronco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a Patreon level at which we buy the fucking Bronco, <laughs> and we do the show from the Bronco. After years of spending uh, at the uh, Alcatraz East Crime Museum oh, in Tennessee, yeah. the uh, white Ford Bronco will soon be up for sale. Oh yes, mm. yes. I hope it just goes straight to eBay, man. We can do this. We can get this. I, I feel like it's within our realm. Oh, they're hoping for one point five million. Oh, that's, a lot. Oh, that's a that lot of seems, money. That seems high. And honestly, if we did raise that, I don't know if I would have. I mean, I can't we I get a things. lot of pudding for one. Yeah, I was gonna say. I was gonna yeah. say. I don't. I don't see how we do both. Like, I think we'd have to pick the Bronco <laughs> or the pudding fight. Ah, I'm kind of on pudding fight. I mean. <laughs> You can't eat a Bronco, it's you know? True. So, I mean, like, there's that. I mean... You also wouldn't want to eat this pudding. Well, no. Oh, but, the, I mean, the Mussolini you're going car to. at one point was just owned by a major in the American army oh, good who then him. shipped it home. It looks like he took it as a spoil of war. Yeah. Oh, wow. In World War II, you could do spoils of war. Yeah. And it looks like he, like he looks like he took that oh, and just shipped it to his family's home in upstate New yep. York. Put it in the garage. Where he drove it as just a normal driver <laughs> car daily driver? until it oh. broke down. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if it was his daily driver, but it looked I'm according to the story, he just drove it oh, pretty I mean, often. Yes. If I had OJ's Bronco, oh, that's my daily driver. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I want to be in traffic. Yeah. I just want to sit in it longer. <laughs> Holy this is got like this article, this is on Business Insider, if any of this is incorrect. Uh, th- uh according to this, in 1970 the Alpha was not in good shape. A high school teacher bought it for three hundred dollars. Oh yes. Oh my god. Oh, that's so after great. he was after he was told the connection. Uh Wow. He just picked up a $300 Alfa Romero. He contacted a Mussolini historian who was able to put him in touch with the former Nazi driver. Oh, my God. Who chauffeured Mussolini in that car. Oh, wow. 
to verify. Yeah. Like, this is actually the car. Wow. Holy shit. That's a great ROI. Oh, so it was like, it was like lost. It wasn't lost, but it, people didn't understand whose car it was. Right. And then in, the, in 1970, uh, it, it was uh, finally, uh, oh, that's they fantastic. realized who it was. I'm I'm all for that return on investment, man. I hope that's the original seller. Well, not original, but I hope that's the guy that cashed the 2.1. Yeah, I, I hope don't know. he got paid. Probably not. 300 bucks. No, no, it changed It changed hands several times between the 70s and early 2000s, according you know, to this. You know, I think the, the, the point of this story is that we all need to be checking Craigslist. You know, because that was on for there. Mussolini cars. I, I mean, fucking, that's where it was at some point. How do you search for that on Craigslist, Jim? Ah, oh, man. Do you just type in fascist? I think so. I think yeah. I think you just type <laughs> fascist near me. Fascist, <laughs> fascist getaway car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fascist getaway car. <laughs> and uh, my flights were canceled <laughs> <laughs> instantaneously. Self destructive self care. Uh, hi, Nick, Jacob, Whitney, and Chinstrap. I've been meaning to write in for a couple of years now, but the request for questions recently has finally made me get off my butt and do it. All right. I am a 29 year old, pronouns are he and his, and have been in therapy for a couple of years now. And pod therapy helped normalize and destigmatize therapy enough for me to seek help, and I could not be more grateful oh, good. for what Thank you, you guys have done and continue to do for regular people. And while I have made a lot of progress, I can't help but have trouble breaking a few bad habits. I've always been the person people rely on since I was young and didn't have the best childhood where I was allowed to be a child. Additionally, I had a dysfunctional and toxic relationship with my family, which I distanced myself from by moving out two years ago. I've been establishing appropriate boundaries and working on catching myself from seeking other people's problems to fix. Huge shout out to my therapist. She's awesome. Here's the problem I'm writing about today. Previously, I would hold in my own struggles and problems until I boiled over. My strategy for boiling over was to do something large and ridiculous, like buy an old project car and hyper-focus on completing it. Like an Alfa Romeo? I mean, it feels really (laughs) opportune. It feels really opportune. But 29-year-old former professor uh, buying it for 300 bucks, it probably doesn't check out. Uh, like buying an old project car and hyper focus on completing it, getting into some sort of motorsports with said project car or other potentially dangerous hobbies and pursue them with reckless abandon until I would get sick from exhaustion or hurt myself or partying and binging, drinking, trying different drugs, etc. I've stopped this pattern and can catch myself. After like the eighth time, I don't think you get to keep saying trying the drug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not trying. <laughs> this. Oh, yeah. yeah, you have a guy. I stopped this pattern and can catch myself before I do it. However, it's difficult for me to focus this energy into something productive and positive like working out or perhaps going back to school for my master's. I do finally have some level of self-preservation that I did not possess before, but I still crave risky pursuits that get the adrenaline pumping. Does this feeling ever go away? How do I focus that energy into something more positive? Do I just need time and to keep battling that urge, desire, craving and hope it gets easier? Should I start golfing? <laughs> Feel free to reword the question. Signed, Anonymous. Don't start golfing. No. I think if you hate yourself, yeah. Oh, no one should start golfing. I think no. that's a great golfing way. Golfing is an abusive relationship. There's not a chance soul. that you hate yourself enough. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's Look, two drugs. True. Okay, yeah, I'd rather you do golfing. drugs than golf. If you're going to blow the money, you know, <laughs> get hot. I mean, hell, it's not the '80s anymore. Coke isn't that expensive. Anymore. Okay, yeah, it's affordable, <laughs> especially if you go to Costco. Yeah, there's a guy. You know, you get it in bulk. That's a good discount. Self-destructive ways to kind of cope with what's going on. I, I think that. I mean, I think we've we've all seen it to some extent, but I, I think the writer's asking an interesting question here, which is kind of doing some excessive risky behavior. When they're boiling over, that the, the steam is rising, they're hot under the collar, things are getting rough, and they're like, fuck it, I'm going to do this big, huge thing. I'm going to put a bunch of money into this new project, big action, adrenaline-seeking, risk-taking. What do we think about that? Does that go away over time? Is that something that you can mitigate? I mean, that that's a, it's an interesting pattern to be caught doing. So the thing that got my attention was more of like the time frame mm. and like the level of intensity. 
Like the way the writer describes it builds up, builds up, builds up, builds up, builds up. And then finally it has to explode and be let out. Right. And then it becomes something high risk, potentially dangerous. Mm. Um, I guess, so my, my first thought is like, no, that's not necessarily a bad thing if it doesn't cause problems. Like right. hyper-focusing on, like taking on a big project, hyper-focusing on that. Okay, well, if that doesn't cause any problems, that's probably okay. Buying an old car and restoring it. Mm -hmm. Great project, okay? But it sounds like the problem is with the intensity of it. Um, so if, if you know, just kind of like it, th that old analogy of like letting off steam. Right. You know, to just be able to kind of open the valve a little bit every once in a while. Yeah. As opposed to letting something build up over a long period of time. So we're looking at really kind of creating a pattern of behavior that yeah. allows for healthy coping as opposed to letting it just build up and then explode all at once. Well, what's interesting about this, so obviously the the binging on alcohol and drugs thing, I'm, I'm going to put that off in its own box. Um, that's That's got its own pattern to it. We have words to describe that. Um, binging behavior. I just want to set that aside for a second. The rest of this to me almost sounds like these periodic mini midlife crises where mm -hmm. I've seen people do this, where it's like they're doing their thing, they're, they're chugging away at life, they're going through it, and periodically they, you know, kind of snap. And they're just like, I'm fucking going to Thailand. And they're just like, mm -hmm. bye. And you're like, what? what? Like, where'd that guy go? Like, he just fucked off for a month and he went to Thailand. He just like, he just snapped or he did something really big. He just sold his house, you know, or quit his job. And like, you know, the, the writer doesn't talk about those examples, but I've seen that pattern where per periodic, like almost mini midlife crises where people just feel bottled up and they feel stifled and stagnant and they feel like they need to do something adventurous. They need mm -hmm. to like recapture the spirit of the unknown and just like do something big, take on a whole new project or whatever. And I agree with you, Nick. I think that I don't look at that as something that would necessarily need to be corrected, but I think therapeutically I would be very interested in it. Like mm -hmm. if somebody told me they were doing that and it was also quite unpredictable, again, setting aside the drugs and alcohol, I would say things like, how does your spouse feel about that? How's your yeah. family feel? Like, do you suddenly blow your life savings? Do you suddenly get so fixated on fixing this car that like you're no longer a good partner and a good parent? Is it almost kind of like a manic episode? Right. Yeah. Yeah. There would be a lot of question marks yeah. that would be associated with that. Because like when you say something like I get hyper fixated on fixing a car, like, do you mean you stay up for two weeks yeah. and tweak out yeah. and try to fix this fucking car? Yeah. That's interesting. You know, like, do you have uh, grandiosity, hyper confidence, uh, amazing insomnia? Like, then do you crash and become uh, wickedly depressed? Like, yeah, maybe that is. But no, I, I think that this pattern, I would find it curious Really, to me, the question I would ask is, does this behavior cause a clinically significant amount of distress? Mm -hmm. Does it interfere with your family life, your social functioning, your work functioning? Do you take high financial risks? Um, are you doing life damage when you do this? Mm -hmm. That, that to me, is the way that I would measure. Health issues. Health mm -hmm. issues. Yep. I mean, now, to, to add back in one of the things Anonymous asked, drinking and drugging, yeah. So, I mean, if you're touching that stuff and that's part of your self-explosive pattern— I'm not making room for that in your life. I'm not like, yeah, no problem, buddy. Boys yeah, will be I mean, boys. Throw no. gambling in there with the same Right, thing, yeah. Know? Suddenly it's... I take my life savings and bet it all on black, yeah. you know, or I go on a weekend bender to Bellagio. Like, mm -hmm. no, like the, the, these are self-destructive patterns. And, and so, and the writer says as much and says, hey, this is kind of a form of self-harm, how excessively I get into this, which is where the writer, I think, is circling their question around to say like, okay, so when people have this kind of a pattern, does that feeling diminish over time? Does it go away? Or, and I think this is a fair question, is there a way to steer that energy into something that is positive? And I, I think that we've seen people kind of do that, you know? Yeah. They've creatively come up with ways to harness their their restless energy into something that does fine for their lives, it is a good choice, but also gives them that that escape from reality that they're looking for. It is interesting because like I, I I would want to dig in a little bit deeper. Maybe this is something your therapist can kind of work on, you know, with you is kind of understanding a little bit about like where this is coming from and like why the 
intensity and the short bursts. Yeah. Because like the, the, the obvious answer for me is to just, okay, you've got a big project. Why don't we just take that chunks at a time? Right. You know, why don't, you know, if you're going to do this, I, I'm going to restore a car. Let's just, yeah. you, again, use that as an example. Well, instead of like, I'm going to do this and I'm just going all in, you know, having thought about this for two days and I'm right. just going to go all in and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this for the next 36 hours yeah. and then I'm just going to abandon the project. Mm-hmm. I would want to learn a little bit more about that because like the obvious answer to this is like, okay, well, you can still do that, but let's, let's, uh, let's plan on, I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to work on this for two hours tonight. Then I'm going to take tomorrow off, work two hours on it the next day and I'm going to space it out. So I'm going to do the same project. I'm just going to do it at a much more manageable pace. Yeah. But that doesn't appear to be an option because if it was an option, the writer would already be doing it. So I had a guy that I used to work with, uh, who I think had a similar kind of thing where, you know, he, he had it together, successful guy, had great family, great careers doing his thing, but he'd get restless, you know, and, and you get to this place of like, I don't know, I just got a lot of things on my shoulders and sometimes I just want to just do something crazy. But the way he would channel that energy, because this restoring a car thing got brought up in this letter, he would go off and buy a hot rod that needed to be restored. And then he would put money into it and, and repair it and fix it, but he would sell it mm-hmm. and he'd turn a profit. So in the end, like, yeah, I'm sure his family was kind of like, hey, you seem really preoccupied with this for a while. We're getting a lot less of you. And, and, you know, they kind of learned to talk about it where he was able to explain, like, that is true. I think I'm using this as my escape. I'm not threatening that I could go on a cocaine bender, you Mm -hmm. know, but, like, of all the things in the spectrum I'm probably capable of right now, I'm asking you to be okay with this, Mm -hmm. you know, because at least this I'm going to sell and put some money into our kids' college savings, you know, like, at least it's a harmless hobby, just let me be in here and do my thing. And, you know, so I definitely think there's a way to channel it toward positivity if that can scratch the itch. I, I also want to be sensitive to the impulse because, like, this question of, like, will the desire or craving just go away if I don't act on it? I don't know because there are if, – if it's an addictive craving, that's a different conversation. Then we're talking about do you have to binge drugs and alcohol? Like, no, you do not have to. That mm-hmm. is – you can absolutely just wait that out. You get to. You can, yeah, as, as Jacob, the life coach, says. <laughs> this is not something you're obligated to do. It is a privilege. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy yourself, son. But no, like this idea of like I, I must do these things, I don't think so. I, I, but I also want to respect that for many people, this is the spice of life. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you say, hey, I want you to work at this job for 20 years and then retire – I'd be like, you know what, man, from time to time, I need to fuck off to Thailand, Mm -hmm. you know, and just be crazy for a week Mm -hmm. and just go experience something that's neat to me and exciting and exhilarating and come back. And like, okay, like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know that that's wrong. Um, It really comes down to how self-destructive something is. Mm -hmm. That's the metric I'm measuring by. Drug and alcohol binge, I don't love for anybody's life. Um, Restoring a car, obviously very far on the other side of the spectrum. But if it becomes a dysfunctional thing, like it's interfering with the rest of your life, yeah, now I'm concerned therapeutically. Honestly, the more we talk about this, the more on the, I'm on the side of like, yeah, you should probably start picking up golf. Nobody hates themselves that much, Nick. No. It's a I cry think, for help. I, I think it gives you it gives you the uh, learning something new. It gives you something exciting to that sense. And also, it's something that you can never master. You still get to waste a ton of money. No, so like you- Piss you off are, your spouse. You're you're motivated to get better at it, and you'll it, you're chasing the dragon. You'll never chasing you'll never get better at it. Chasing the <laughs> yeah. dragon, aka golf. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, Another Masters tournament. No, watching I'm, him chase I'm, the dragon. I'm kind of like this too, in a sense, where a little bit different, but like I get really into something. Like I get really into it, and then I find something else that like. I really want to get into. Yeah. Learning guitar was exactly this way. Yeah. So was Photoshop. Like, you went through a hard Photoshop. Phase. Yeah. I went through, yeah. I went through a hard I remember Photoshop. This. Yeah. <laughs> That's really funny to say. Yeah. And it's true. It is true. Um, 
but yeah, like learning play guitar is you know, like, I, I really, you know, kind of like into rock. So I, I start kind of learning the blues and then kind of getting into rock. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I want to learn how to Travis pick. Yeah. And so I'm like, I'm just going gonna go into that. And yeah. then, Oh, I want to learn how to play jazz guitar. So then I stop what I'm doing and I go into playing jazz guitar. Yeah. And then it's like, I need to learn how to play ukulele. So I like stop put the guitar down and go get, Jeez. you know, it's just one thing after another. Wow. And I, I, I don't know why I think that's just kind of how my brain works. We are not the same man in no. any way, shape or form. I do not have the patience to do any of those things. Mm-hmm. And like never in my life have been like, Oh, I feel so stifled. I need to do something extremely technical and laborious. <laughs> yeah. Nope. I'm like, you know what else sounds good? Go take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> like, that sounds nice. I'm yeah, going to watch Apollo know. 13 for the 80th time and eat fucking carne asada french fries. That sounds good. But I get the idea of like, I need to do something big. I just need yeah. a huge break, a huge deviation from the norm. I don't think that's crazy. Do I think it diminishes over time? Man, I've seen it go both ways. I've seen that kind of behavior uh, soften over time as a person just kind of doesn't, they've, they've amassed a lot in life. They've accomplished a lot. They, they, it it causes more disruption to their relationships. And so they just tend to not do that kind of stuff. I've also seen it go the other way, which is the classic midlife crisis, Mm -hmm. you know, where no, somebody was mild mannered, straight laced, you know, for many decades. And then they get to a place in their life where they're like, you know what? I, I love what I've accomplished. I love everything. I cherish everything, but I can see the next, you know, 30 years of my life in a straight line being just this road at 60 Mm -hmm. miles per hour and the view never changes and that's terrifying and I need something exciting to happen and I'm going to plunge myself into the mystery, into the unknown. I'm going to take on something that sounds interesting and fascinating and go and that that happens too, you know, and so Mm -hmm. I don't know that they grew out of it. I think they grow into it. So, you know, Anonymous, it's a good question. I mean, it's really case by case. Therapeutically though, I am less concerned about this intermittent explosive pattern that you have and mostly concerned about how it is manifested. Agreed. That's everything to me. Yeah. Drug and alcohol binge. Every time that happens, something could go wrong. You blow $10,000 on a fixer upper car and you lose interest in six months and sell it for parts and ultimately lost $6,000 manageable. You can recover from that. Yeah. 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 Not if you pick up golf. Then you lose another six thousand. Yeah, that's just how that works. Yeah, and then you're just down this. Golf is like herpes. Mm. You don't get rid of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can manage it mm-hmm. with training and doctor mm-hmm. supervision. You mm-hmm. learn to coexist with golf. Yeah, yeah, that feels correct. Okay. That's definitely correct. Yeah, there's a shirt for that. I think with mm-hmm. the floppy hat, Nick. Yeah, I think that's on there. Oh, that's it. We got it. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a whole thing now. There you go. Podtherapybaitshop.com. Soon. Nick will use his uh, that, Photoshop skills. It has to be me. I'm the only one that puts it on there. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. You're also the only one that golfs in the floppy hat. So. I don't golf I don't golf in the floppy hat. Also, someone get Nick a big hat. floppy hat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Send that. Hat. Send that in. We obviously need that. <laughs> we need all this stuff. We need lots of fun things. I and am excited, though, that you are working with a therapist. I, I love that's, that. That's, that's everything. Yeah. That's that everything. makes me feel a lot better. Yeah. And if you're out there and you are feeling really restless and feeling like, man, I just feel, you know, wound up tight. I feel like I just got to do something big. And I've been auditioning all these ideas and I'm like, you know, kind of window shopping all these crazy ideas of taking some adventure or getting into some big thing or, you know, trying shrooms or the fuck it is that's on your mind. Boy, do I want you to get into therapy right now. Um, That's Mm -hmm. important. Yeah. Go ahead and do that first, uh, because whatever amount of money you spend on therapy is going to be cheaper than that DUI uh, or whatever other God awful thing you're about to do or all the money you're about to lose in roulette. Please go uh, do what this writer's doing, talking to a therapist first, moderating those urges, tracking where they come from. Um, that's the way a therapist is going to approach this. Oh, there's the big right. floppy hat. That's it. That that's that's beautiful. Oh, that's way bigger and floppier than. Is that going to get in yeah, the that's way what of I'm the golf picturing. swing? No, 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 that's going to that's yeah. bend. That's going to be that's going to be great. You're fine. I mean, it's not going to be. Your fun. shoulders won't even burn. No. that's great. Yeah, that's a fine. And hat. you can be shirtless in that hat. <laughs> Do you golf shirtless? You can't. Oh, what if you wear no, a Chippendales bow tie? Uh, no. Because I know you yeah. guys have a dress code. Yeah, it's, it has to be a collared shirt. Uh, the Chippendales guys don't have a collar? What if you just wear a little collar? 
Yeah, just do What that. if you have a little collar with the bow tie? We can get you a collar. <laughs> I don't think that's There's a way to do this. <laughs> this Jacob, fine. look up the golf course rules. <laughs> I'm gonna, I, I need I'm the bylaws. This. I need right. the bylaws. Yeah, right. we're going to need a, a full... You're going to uh, have a printout to present <laughs> to the, uh, the the person from the golf course yeah. that comes out to tell uh, you that you're wrong. Sir, if you'd pay attention to my phone right now. To my lawyer. Slide yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, let me just call my life coach. You can tell Page him 12, that I'm under three. arrest. He'll read you the rights. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about telehealth therapy. You're listening to Pod Therapy. Today's episode is brought to you by Jake Schneider, Judy Schneider, Leon Kassab, Carolyn Albert, Sammy Scoop, Sarah Smith, Mike Helm, Darren Cunningham, Matt and Lisa Tangerman, and Mrs. Hot Dog Scoop. And if you want to become a Thera producer, head on over to patreon.com slash therapy and sign up. And Can I have your other your name at times like Oh, this. you didn't take either of those medellas. I took one of them. Oh, okay, I, took one. I want the other one. Okay. By the way, the, uh, mango lot of my search that I put in for that floppy hat was floppy golf hat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that checks out. Yeah. yeah. It's right. clearly designed for golf. Yeah. When we last left our trivia, Jim was kicking the living shit out of Jacob. Oh, yeah. And Jim overcoming his gambling nothing. addiction by turning down bad bets. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> you, just, you just thought you were going to lose that bet. Sick of all what this winning. could go wrong? Sick of it. Uh, nothing right. bad can happen. Here we go. Walking on sunshine. Roger Bannister's running shoes, the ones he wore while breaking the four-minute mile. Oh, damn. Auctioned off in 2015. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Oh, uh, let's see. Jacob, Jim, Jim goes Jacob, first. Jim goes first. Man, I feel like this, this, this has pretty good historical value because I don't know very much about sports history, and I know about this guy. Well, it was it was considered impossible. Yeah, it, it was considered to be impossible for a human being to break a four minute mile. Yep, because they didn't let black people play sports. And back then he then. did it, and then everybody fucking did it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was broken. And then it, like, become, it, yeah. it becomes common. Yeah, it turned yeah. out every freaking which is in high perfect for the show because that tells you a little bit about like human psychology. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and now that relates to performance. Yeah, there's. A I lesson. mean, that's the three of us. Ran and and achieved a, a sub four minute mile because yeah. of this person. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, that electric was, scooter. It was on our way to get sushi. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, we got it done. Well, yeah. We were all riding on Whitney's back as well. Yeah, so really, she's the hero. Yeah, but you know, we contributed. <laughs> I feel like this is really important. I feel like among sports memorabilia, this is a very important piece to have. It's one of a kind. I think before you, you answer, okay. Double or nothing uh, on the first he round. Wants him back. Whoever wins this you round dummy. gets all the points from this round Not and the first round. Me, loser. Not no, gonna no. happen. If you Jim, win that's... this round, you got six points. Okay. Oh, I see where you're yes, going. Yes, so you with get this. you get all three points from this round, regardless of who gets a point in this round. Whoever wins this round gets all three the points from round. this round oh, and you... all three points from round one. Yeah. We doing that? I don't I don't fully understand it. There's a lot of mathing going on. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm just gonna keep fucking winning. Okay. I think that's what I'm gonna okay. do. Interesting strategy. I'm just gonna keep going. Interesting strategy. I'm All gonna right. win it again. Hope that doesn't backfire. I think these shoes sold for. Give me one hundred thousand. I, okay. I think it's one hundred. Okay, that's put me in for one hundred. Ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. You son of a bitch! You're going on the low side. Huh? I'm going low. All right. This feels a little low. All right. This feels like. I'm, I'm my my real guess is somewhere in like the seventy five thousand mark. Yeah, I think you're probably going to end up being a bit closer. On Let's that. see, because I mean they're just fucking shoes, but they are kind of like the Neil Armstrong. They're great shoes. shoes. They're good yeah. shoes. It's a big deal. One point to Jim. Ah, oh, what was the number? What was the number? Four hundred and eleven thousand dollars. Oh my goodness! Uh, technically, four hundred eleven, four hundred ninety-three dollars. Wow. Again, I, I need to know who bought this. Yeah, wow. I need I need backstory on next next week's quiz. I'm going to need backstory <laughs> on all the purchasers yeah. of yeah. these items. Yeah, I should. I, you're right. I should yeah. have done a lot more. I research. don't even want to hear <laughs> the not... trivia questions next week. I just want <laughs> right. to hear the addendum. <laughs> all right, here's the guy that bought the shoes for four hundred <laughs> thousand dollars. Weird shit. Those was are purchased. going to be my deep dives for the next ten there weeks. There you go. I mean, do you wear them? If you buy them, do you put them on? Or do you just bronze them? You put them, them on yeah. once. You I do. Yeah. I, I think put you put them on. on once. I put them on while I'm driving OJ's Bronco. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're my driving shoes. I just yeah, wear all of my relics. Shoes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With the Pope's gerbil mobile in the back. <laughs> yeah. 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 Fucking let's go. All right, here we go. <laughs> all the things. Jacob's the first on this one. Okay. Four to zip. 
just getting an ass pounding over here. Willie yep. Nelson's oh, take braids. Your medicine. What? Sold in 2014. His hair? Willie Nelson's braids. That's his hair, right? They and, got his hair off. And like now, Willie Nelson was then uh, still alive. Correct. He he was alive then, yeah, uh-huh. and he's still alive now. Well, right. The value's going to jump once that's not true anymore. Yeah. Then I mean, whoever know. this was who bought it yeah. thought that he, they were buying an investment piece yeah. that was going to pay <laughs> off within a couple of years. Oh, months. Yeah. Like, I think they yeah. were like, oh, any day now. Yeah. Just watching the news, sitting there rubbing their brains <laughs> between right. their hands. I'll do... It's like a rabbit's foot. I'll do a Tangeman quarter mill. Oh. Okay, 125000 That's right. <laughs> An Iowa quarter mill. <laughs> oh, man. I actually think... I think you got it. I think it's going to, I mean, owning the hair, the braids, the famous braids. I mean, is there DNA in hair? I think oh, fuck is, yeah. Right? Those so things will have... still test positive for marijuana. Yeah. You've 100%. Got, you've got, will, you could probably smoke those oh, braids. Oh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They are hemp. You could, you could grow a new Willie. <laughs> yeah. You, <laughs> you could. could clone Willie Nelson from his braids. Grow a Willie. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go lower. Um, oh, boy. But man, I can justify going higher. I mean, that is a big fucking deal. I'm going to... Okay, because they can be regrown, I think it's going to be... <laughs> because they, oh, because because Willie Nelson can regrow his hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not because, that they way can grow it's not... Some, not because the purchaser can grow something from yeah, the hair. Yeah. <laughs> Start a Willie Nelson hair farm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like, oh, Tom Brady's Super Bowl football from this... Is like, okay, was, he'd, you know, like, it can win more. So I'm going to go with... Uh, give me 70000 Let me go under. Let me get 70. Oh, I've got this. I've left room. I've left room for a gentleman's wager. I'm betting on myself on this one Mm. all day long. Mm -hmm. What are we betting on this, Jim? Uh, The point. Stop Uh, trying to get me out of this. I know. I'm just going to coast to victory, (laughs) my man. The last one's worth 10 million anyway. You're going to be fine. (sighs) Point to Jim. (gasps) No way. You fucking suck. No way. You obviously overpay for your hair. 37. Let me tell you about where I hang out, I've buddy. I've got a mitt invested let me, in celebrity hair. Let me send you hair. some bookmarks, yeah. okay? In my browser history, I've got some bookmarks. 37000 $37,000. Wow. Honestly, yeah, that's a yeah. fair price. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't pay that, but I get paying that. Thirty-seven k yeah. for some Willie Nelson locks. It's up You're there. an idiot. All right. You know? Jim, you're up first on this one. Man, all I do is win. Lee Harvey Oswald's <gasps> wedding ring. Oh, sold an auction for uh, uh, at uh, in, in 2013. Oh. This is the ring that he used to kill Abraham Lincoln. Yes, mm. he strangled him to death with a wedding ring. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. As Abraham we all know. Lincoln, known for having a very thin yeah. neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he used Willie Nelson's locks. Yeah, it's the fucking noose. <laughs> Lee Harvey Abraham Lincoln, Oswald. fabled uh, amateur wrestler, yes, yeah, strangled yeah, yeah. with a ring. Yeah, this was before he killed vampires. Lee yeah, Harvey Oswald. That was a better movie than it should have been. Oh, it was so good. I've heard. I've never. It was seen a it. great yeah. time. Uh, settle down. It was a better movie than it should have been. <laughs> it, it works because you came in with no expectations. Right. You're like, oh, this. Okay, I'm just gonna have a great day. There was also one that was like Pride and Prejudice and, and zombies. zombies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Did you see Sense and Sensibility and Sea Monsters? No, I didn't see that one. <laughs> that was fucking awesome! And the dude just rewrites the books and just yeah. throws that extra piece in. It's like, and yeah. now there are zombies! I like it when it's just like ads and whatever. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, Forrest vampire Gump, And a dolphin. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, great books. Um, Give me Wedding Ring. Oh, man. What year? Uh, sold in 2013. Yeah, boy. Man. All right. Give me. Oh, it's not going to be that high. Oh, well, maybe. I'll take two. Give me 200,000. Okay. Give me that under. He's going under it? 199, 999. You're going all okay? You're going to take all that space? I'm taking all the under, baby. All right. Yeah, smacks of desperation. There. It does. It does. All right. What Jacob's we... on the board. Hey! Whoa! What was uh, it? It's one hundred ninety-nine thousand nine hundred I was going to go three fifty. <laughs> so uh, I'm really glad I didn't go that high. That sold for one hundred eighteen thousand dollars. Okay. All right. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Yeah. 
So, scores. Again, I want to know who bought it. Yeah, I, that's very important. All I want is I want to know who yeah, bought that. That's that's an important detail. Scores Same guy who bought are, car. Uh, oh. Jim, five. Jacob, one. Whitney, zero. Whitney, Whitney you suck. Come on. Jesus pew, Christ. Pew, pew. Texas. <laughs> Telehealth therapy from Lee Popsicle. Hello to all my favorite life coaches. Hey, Lee. Hey. I found a therapist, but it's telehealth. I'm not an online kind of person, so I had to hook up a camera, headphones, and a mic for my first session. I can, on occasion, meet with him in person when schedules work out, and I look forward to that in what will be my fourth session. I feel a disconnect communicating through a screen. Is this something I will just get over? Do you have any advice for making online sessions feel more personal? Separate and secondary question. Secondarily, I wanted to write in a number of times, but the idea of sending an email to be read on the podcast can be very intimidating. The thoughts of, will I sound dumb? They haven't read it yet. Is it because they don't like me? Or was my email even worth reading? Create a ton of hesitation. I bet I'm not the only one who has those feelings. I'm not sure there's anything you could say to help these thoughts, but give it a try. Pew, pew, Portland, Lee Popsicle. P.S. <laughs> love you guys. Keep up the super important work. I'll address the uh, the last part first. I'd, I'd like to reassure oh. Lee that, um, yes, uh, all of your fears are founded and true. We just judge. All yep. we do is stare at it. That's it. Nope. See, I was going to take a different approach. Oh, Interesting. On that one. Okay. I, uh, yeah. I was just going to point out, Jim, where, where did you go? Where was that? Was that place? That, where does it go? Uh, Colob? Colob? Colob Reservoir. What? Okay. Yeah. No, you're not going to sound dumb. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We after don't worry. That, don't worry, after bud. that, Lee. Yeah. you're not going to sound yeah, dumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah. you can pronounce reservoir, yeah, 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 you can hop fine. over the limbo bar. <laughs> you do it. You're going to be fine. <laughs> yeah, it's down there. It's way down there. This is a good question. So, two parter here. The first one about telehealth. I'll speak to that. You know, because yep. I provide on telehealth, and then I think we should do the encouragement thing. I think that's important. But so, in my private practice, I've exclusively done the telehealth thing now through Zoom. Uh, for four years since since uh, the COVID started, and I've done the math, and I've now been doing virtual longer than I was doing private practice in office. Um, and you know, I it's it's definitely a, a, a to your own taste kind of thing. Um, I've noticed more and more people as time have gone on are now opting for the in person therapist. And there was actually a study that just came out that broke down the numbers. Of uh, of how many therapists are exclusively doing virtual? How many ex- uh, therapists are exclusively in person? What are the mostlies and what is what is the hybrid in the middle? And the vast majority are back in person. Mm. Um, I am in a very small percentage. I think it was like sixteen percent of therapists anywhere are exclusively doing virtual. Huh. Um, like I am, yeah. So sixteen or sixty? Sixteen. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So I mean, like it's it's up there with the amount of people that are actually providing some amount of in person, which uh, Lee's therapist is. Like it's a little bit hybrid, where they're doing like maybe three virtuals for every one in person, which you know the, I like that, and I've I've actually been strongly considering doing that as well. Um, getting back into office maybe one day a week. And just kind of giving that as an option for folks that that would be the only medium that would really work for them. Because a lot of people do feel like Lee feels, mm-hmm. where they're like, you know what? what? What I've noticed more so is that I think people, when they're first stepping into that discussion of I'm looking for a therapist, their first thought is, you know, therapy is a, a, a an item you feel whenever you pay for it. Like, it's not just like, oh, you know, throw in the fries. I won't even notice. Like, no. You're paying for healthcare, and you notice that you're paying for healthcare, especially if it's out of pocket. You feel it, and so a lot of people are thinking, you know what? I really want whatever I imagine to be the full experience, and so I want to sit on a couch in an office, and I want to drive across town. I want to, you know, talk to the secretary. I want to go into this room. I want to see the diplomas on the wall, except for the one Jacob took, you know. And I just want to be a part of this and um, feel like it's there, earned, earned. <laughs> yes, correct. One rightfully. Uh, through glorious battle, I'll get it back in the pudding championships. It's coming. Yeah, we'll see. We'll we'll have it back. I will hoist it over your dead body. Uh, is bloated pudding filled body? <laughs> <laughs> After I strangle him with Willie Nelson's gorgeous lungs. The battle of the tips. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, it, it is a normal feeling for a lot of people to want that. I, I also think that there's something to leaving your home to go to therapy to kind of get into that mindset. It can of, be. I'm yeah. doing something. A lot of people think on the yeah. whole drive there. 
What what we seem to see, though, is that for those who do hybrid, the data seems to suggest that a lot of people will go in for their first session, and then very quickly uh, they'll they'll tend to prefer high, uh, virtual. Hmm. Um, for just it's overwhelmingly convenient, right? There's no driving, yeah. uh, no small talk. Instead of having to budget three hours of your day, you know, one probable hour to do the driving or some portion of that hour to do the driving, the second hour to visit, the third hour to drive home. Um, it is literally just put this in between whatever you were in the middle of doing. It's fine. And a lot of people seem to prefer the tele thing in, in, for other reasons because they're in their own home. They're comfortable. Their dog or cat is there. You know, like if they have kids, it's very manageable. They just go to a different room. But there it's are an easier some, commute. It, it is, yeah, one hundred percent. But a lot of people do feel like Lee, where they'll say, you know, for me personally, the telehealth thing just isn't working for me. It doesn't connect. Totally fair. Totally fine. So I, I like this point um, because I do think that it's good for people to be heard on that. Does that change over time? Do you think? Do you get any feedback from any of your patients? As in, like they weren't really into it at first, but then they kind of got used to it. Yeah, yeah. So like, I, I've definitely had people that will message me on Yelp and they'll say like, Hey, I looked you up. I'd like to work with you. Um, do you offer in person? And I'll give them the, you know, speech. Hey, I really don't right now. I'm only virtual. Um, and I'll be honest, like, Hey, you know, in the future I may return to office. It's definitely on the table. Um, but I don't want you to anticipate that right now. It's just virtual. That's the deal. And I usually tell people, Hey, but I totally get it. If, if in person is important to you, I have a handful of colleagues that I would recommend, um, who I know and trust. I think they'd be great for you. And I let people think about it. And I've, I've had, you know, more than a few people say, for whatever reason, I think you're the right fit for me. I'm going to go ahead and proceed with telehealth. I hope this is good. So we give it a try. Majority of the time, I think people ultimately get to a place where they're like, this is great. Like, I don't think about it anymore. I feel like we are just as connected as if we were in person. Um, I'm focused. It's fine. And, and it's overall good. But there, again, are people, and there's nothing wrong with that, who say, for whatever reason, I need to drive to the place. I need to physically be in that space. Yeah. Uh, technology is distracting for me. If I'm using any kind of tech, there's something about it that doesn't maybe feel, I don't know, like I'm really talking to somebody. And, and that can kind happen. Of cold. It can. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, I can't relate to the therapy aspect of this, but a big part of my job is providing training. Yeah. So I do a lot of training f- uh, sessions for a lot of therapists in Nevada. And prior to COVID, they were all done in person. Okay. So I would be someplace, uh, you know, uh, we'd have a, a location and I'd have 30 therapists show up for a day and I do a training yeah. or I fly up to Reno and do a training up there, but it was all done in person. Mm. And I got used to that. And then COVID hit and then all of a sudden we're doing everything virtual. Yeah. And then, and that was difficult for me because I'm very, uh, engaging as far as like, I don't sit in one spot when I'm doing a training, I'm walking around the room, I'm right. using the whiteboard, I'm, I'm talking to people, I'm having groups get together and talk. And so it was very difficult for me to transition into, um, doing that virtually. And it just felt very cold. It felt very yeah. impersonal. I hate teaching and online. It, it, it was, good. yeah, it was yeah. really hard to get people engaged over time. It got a lot easier. Yeah. And then I, I learned to be less intimidated by it mm-hmm. and cause I was really worried about like, Oh, I don't want to talk over somebody. If they're trying to talk, there's a little bit of a delay, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. You kind of forget about it that, and you just, you just go through it. Yeah. Um, so f- for me in that sense, it got easier, but I definitely agree with him in that. I also kind of look at this the same as like, you know, when I was working out during COVID mm. or trying to, you mm-hmm. know, I was used to going to the gym and then COVID happened. So I'm like, oh, I'll just work out from home. I can't do it. Yeah. If I'm home, I'm in a home mode. Okay. If I'm at the gym, I'm in gym mode. Yeah. And I think it's very easy for people to get that same thing with therapy too. Yeah. It's like, if I'm used to going into a therapist's office, there's something about driving there, getting there, being in that environment that puts me ready and in this mood to be able to kind of open up and share and do mm. the thing that I was supposed to be doing. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I, I definitely see his, his point in that. I Nothing think, wrong with it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think I think if you did, Lee, I think if you did stick with uh, virtual telehealth, 
I think it would become easier over time. I agree. Um, yeah. But it's just a matter of you know where you feel more comfortable. This is yeah. the type of thing that I'm going to be very fascinated as technology with uh, like VR stuff. Oh yeah, uh, continues to get better. Oh, it's coming. Yeah. That's gonna that, that's going to be just a you know a thing that people are going to do. Absolutely, and I think over time, like in the very beginning of telehealth, I was really worried that the intimacy of therapy would be lost, that we mm. wouldn't have that. And I I never was a guy who used like FaceTime or, or like any of those texts. I just never really did it. Yeah. Skyped, you know, I never did any of that. So Zoom for me was really my first attempt to do the video call thing. And I you know personally, I was surprised by how real and how intimate it often was. Um, a lot of and, – and, Lee, I'm going to circle back to your question in just a second, but I just want to PSA about the context. Again, I am all for – I am biased. I, I, I enjoy telehealth therapy. I have a selective sample, right, where mm. the people that pick me seem to be great with it. So when you say, Jim, do people seem happy? Yep, they seem to be really happy. Like, that that's my sample, right? Yeah, because – So I don't know. The people that didn't pick me – they weren't happy, they wouldn't be They didn't pick you. me. Yeah, yeah, there's a bunch of people that just said, oh, I like Jim, but I don't want to do the virtual thing. They went somewhere else. Like, totally fine. So, like, I get it. Um but one of the things I noticed as a therapist, the office setting was more of an obstacle than it was an asset in general. And there's a lot of therapist conversation about how you're going to decorate your office. There's therapists that say it does need to be um, professional because that's a vibe and they need to feel cared for and like they're in a competent setting. So put your degrees on the wall, have a nice desk, keep it nice and clean. Don't get too personal with your shit. There's other people that say, no, 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 that's sanitized and off-putting. It makes them feel like they're in a lawyer's office. I want them to feel uh, like they walk into a nice warm hug in the room. So I'm going to have it be very homey. And and I want it to feel like you walked into my living room. There's going to be pictures on the walls and all this stuff and decorations. Some people say, no, 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 I don't even want it to feel homey because that's distracting. It's too me in, in the room. I want it to feel inviting for anybody. It's a, there's all these different Ooh. approaches, right? And And it goes to show you how distracting mm. being in this foreign environment can be and driving across town and what part of town are we in and what part of day is it and, and what's happening in your world. And so a lot of times when I was in person, I would have to put in some important effort in the beginning of the meeting just to get that person to feel disarmed in my presence. Mm. And that's another thing too, is like when I go to, I have pretty unique feelings about the way a therapist ought to dress when they're on duty. And I've had other therapists that, you know, they, they strongly disagree with my perspective. I tend to err on the side of you're a professional, reflect the profession. Like you're, you know. Yeah. Pull out the nice Crocs. Yeah. Yeah. Wear the nice Crocs. There you go. You know, yeah. The, the going out thong, you know, yeah. really just put the effort in. Um, look decent is, is usually my rule. Like you could also take the session in the hospital and seem fine. Like you could mm -hmm. walk in on that. Um, but there are others who really feel differently about it. So my point is just telehealth was blessedly helpful in removing a lot of that. You're in your space. This glowing phone or iPad or, or computer is the only thing that has changed in your whole environment. You're wearing your clothes. You're in your PJs. You've got your cat on your lap. You're drinking tea from your favorite mug. Everything smells and looks like it did 10 minutes ago. You are more at ease yeah. in that situation mm -hmm. than if you drove across town and put on nice clothes and be seen in public. Right. And come see me. So it, it's an off and on kind of thing. So I tend to be biased in that direction, um, which, again, I, I do not want to come off like I'm disagreeing with Lee. Um, I, I'm trying to contextualize how people might feel in different ways. Because there's also another argument. I've had people that I want them not to work with me. I want them to work with an in-person therapist because part of what's going on in their life, they need to have change. They need to get dressed. They need to leave their place. Yeah. They need to do something different. And I'm trying to push them out the door to do more social activities. And in that situation, therapy is an important part of them disrupting their stagnancy yeah. and getting dressed and getting a coffee and going across town and sitting there and coming into my office and talking to me and the office and its an environment and the way it is different. And they have to adapt to it is important. Mm -hmm. And like all of those are actually therapeutic assets. So it really depends on the case. I do think over time, Lee, it gets better, but I want to answer your question. Then I want to talk about all the people that are thinking about writing a letter. Um, is there things that Lee can do? Or the therapist can do that will make it um, more comfortable. If you are a therapist, I strongly encourage you to do some advanced training in CEUs on telehealth. I don't think you need to go through all the rigmarole of like special telehealth certifications. I've done those. I, I don't know that I've always benefited from them. But I do like CEUs where people have thought about it carefully and have some advice 
Um, I know for me, I was very intentional with telehealth. I am very intentional about my background. It is a partition. It's not virtual, no blurry background. It's a real physical object. I'm very intentional with what I wear. Always it's a collared shirt, like at a minimum, if not a button up. Um, I, I'm very intentional about the, the, the microphone that I use. I didn't like the feeling of putting on like podcast headphones. I felt that that was otherizing and, and took the person away from the image of talking to me in a natural way. Um, it made me seem like I was recording a YouTube video or something with them. And I didn't like that imagery. So I intentionally chose a one ear microphone that, that goes over the back of my head so that there's only a little bit of visual headphone that's happening. And then just a little stem mic that's that's sticking out over. But I wanted that mic because I wanted to control the sound and I wanted to be very direct and, and something natural. But I also didn't want uh, the person to see the whole headset on me, right? So it was very intentional choices mm-hmm. with everything that I did with this. Excellent internet, you know, put the investment in that. Make sure I had a really good high definition camera so everything went through well. Put, you know, chose like really good technology that made everything fluid and simple. Gave them very clear instructions so that they don't stress out like Lee did, like worrying about how to do the tech and everything like that. Just use your phone. It's okay. We can just do this by phone. Keep it interesting. Uh, keep it easy. So I think that there's a lot of intentionality for how you can put people at ease, even through, you know, technology and devices. Um, and, and if you're out there and you're a therapist and you're training in this, really using those attending skills quickly. You know, whenever somebody logs on, um, jumping in with them, getting them conversational, I usually, and, and I could do a whole Patreon on this, but like one of the things I do right away is I speak first. Um, for maybe a paragraph and I'll just like talk about something that's going on or how about the weather or just, and I'm really just letting that person calibrate their technology and, and their like connection to me speaking to them now and letting their brain catch up that like, you're not hearing me through a podcast. You're not hearing me on YouTube. I'm talking to you and with you and I'm letting you kind of get my, you know, my rhythm and my pentameter and just start talking to me that way they can reply in a natural way, but I'm letting them acclimate to me first. Which I do in person too, but there's a lot of little things that can be done, Lee. Um, some of it has nothing to do with you. I want you to just be in the most comfortable place that you can find to, to take the session with the most reliable technology. I don't want you to overthink things like having a headphone, having a webcam, getting a big-ass computer. Um, that's fine if that felt good for you to do. I usually tell people I am 100% comfortable with you just using a phone. Getting something that can attach to your bed or to a desk or to a kitchen table that just anchors your phone, uh, maybe like one of those bendy arm things that can just hold it for you. Just a phone stand. Perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah. a phone stand, use an iPad. Um, Jacob has several that you can get uh, if you ask nicely. He just they, For days, he just shingles his house in them now. I mean, you can just announce on your podcast that yeah. you want an iPad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. people send them to you. Magically. Yeah. They just show up. Yep. Yeah. So very, very possible, but... I think that kind of a stuff. Plethora really, really of help. iPads. A plethora. What is our advice to the people that are scared to send in a question because they think those guys won't read it? Uh, it isn't interesting enough. I'll sound dumb. I'm overthinking it. What is our advice to people that are nervous? Except about for that? the part about us not reading it. Uh, all that could just be true, and it's fine. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> yeah, solid. We're gonna read it. Yeah, there are letters uh, that we've received that we don't read on the air, but not because we thought they were dumb. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, no, no. For for different legitimate reasons. Yeah, and yeah. I'll give you the spectrum, folks. If you want your so, if you write a letter and within the last few shows we have answered that same topic, Th- yeah, that might disqualify your letter, and that's just because we're an educational show, right? And so, if like we just answered a question about. Uh, substance use disorder, and it was very specifically about alcohol, and then we read... And this happens to me, Nick. I don't know if this happens to you. There are definitely times after seven years where I'll hear a letter and I'll go, man, I'm pretty sure we already read that. And mm-hmm. I'll think, oh no, I made a mistake. Like, I, I think I accidentally didn't remove that from the queue. Do you ever have that problem where you're like, oh, dude, I know we've answered that question? Rarely. But okay. Yeah, I mean, I usually I get a lot of deja vu. Everything I, we could have this exact these same questions yeah, next yeah, yeah. week. And We're I'd on a time loop. It like you don't I even would, know. Yeah. yeah, Groundhog Day, and you're fine with it. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I've gotten questions that uh, I've I've thought, shoot, I think we recently answered that, and I've had to go back through the transcripts and check, or through old scripts and see if we did. Um, that's probably not going to get aired. You didn't do anything wrong. 
Um, sometimes we will put it in our, we have like a Google document that's our queue, and we'll put it in there and we'll say like, hey, we answered this one in June or a similar one in June. Let's put this on ice and we'll come back to it down the road. And we have some questions that are sort of like in the ice chest as sort of like, let's circle back around to these if if we ever don't have a more pressing or, you know, kind of like timely question, we'll reach for those. So, I mean, that's how it works. Yeah. But otherwise, I would say... Oh, in disclosure, Whitney and I don't see the emails when they come in. Good point. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Whitney, you guys send the, the questions to Whitney before the shows, yeah. before we record the shows. I hear the questions you the first hear time on live. the show. Yeah, yours are always mm-hmm. hot takes. Yeah. And, you know, we've never really done a lot of pre-vetting. We look at the... So if your question is exceptionally long, if you really want to get your question read, and then we're going to wrap up the show here because I can see this being too much. But, like, if you want to get your question read, read it out loud. Make sure that it sounds like something. Uh, if you if you time our questions when I read them, they're usually a, a couple of minutes. You know, like, they're, they're, you know, they're one page. That's a lot. So get it out there in a couple of paragraphs. Get to the point. If you're giving us tons and tons and tons of details, um, we're either going to heavily edit that or sometimes we're going to say this question needs a lot of editing to be radio ready. So we're going to put it on the bench and come to it Mm -hmm. eventually. And we're going to read other questions that came in first that don't require any effort. You can always count on us to be lazy. Uh, That is a guarantee. So if you make it readable... That's the pod therapy guarantee. That's the pod therapy guarantee. <laughs> doesn't have to be of any particular topic. It's it's really whatever your truth is. Sometimes we get questions that are too short, and it's so quick that it's just like, hey, guys, um, speak about this 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 particular disorder. And it's like not specific enough. It, it's just like, well, we're not just going to start lecturing on anxiety. <laughs> you know, whatever. Our question... That's we do the deep th- dive. You we have to get on Patreon episode, for that. It's, it's an like, hour and a half show. It's not like we're going to do six hours on ADHD. No, no. Yeah. We're not going to do something silly. A, a segment's going to be about 20 minutes on each one. So just give us a couple of paragraphs. Tell us the deets. Make it a specific question um, that's relatable to others. Sometimes we won't read something because it's way too specific or way too intense, and we don't think there's a learning opportunity. And sometimes people will ask us questions about current events, and they'll be like, oh, this just happened. What do you think about that? We gave up on that a long time ago because the show is just not that. Like, we're not well, a political commentary show or a current events show. What we always say on Ice Cream Social, and I think it applies to us on, on this show as well, is that there are smarter people, there are more educated people on those topics right. that are already giving their takes on those. Yes. We don't need to join that conversation. We'll throw bullshit on Patreon sometimes. You know, we're like during COVID. I mean, I had lots of hot takes on on things that were happening in the world. Right. And I'd put it on Patreon and be like, look, there are there are people that pay a little bit of extra money because they, you know, are sad and desperate and want to hear Jim occasionally on a Monday morning. Um, and those people get what they want, which is Jim bullshitting about the news. Um, or like when Trump got impeached the first time. I remember I had like a hot take on that and I had words on that, which was great because if you go back in the archives and listen to that, you can go check the commentary and you can see Smitty Scoop explaining to me how history works when I said <laughs> a bunch of shit that wasn't true. And Smitty was immediately in the comments like, oh, Jim, uh, you said a lot of things and now we're going to. Let me those. just check my notes. Yep, that checks that out. That all of it checks out. So, but the good news is that 90, easily 95% of the letters that come through. Uh, we just glance at them. They seem the right size. We can figure out what the question's about really quickly, and we put it right in the script. We do not read them hard. We, I, I, I don't. I don't know mm. when you're assembling the script. Not at all. Yeah. When I put them in the queue, I glance at them. I look at the top and the bottom. What's the title? What's the question I see at the bottom? Does mm-hmm. it seem interesting? That's it. I want to have more of a hot take on it. Than, yeah. I don't think uh, either of us. Yeah. But there are times that we look at it and we're like, this is very specific, and to answer this question, we would be doing a disservice if we didn't research it yeah. first because it's asking something about science or something about research. But again, if, you're, if your question requires us to do any kind of work, like editing it or doing research to give it an answer, you're less likely to get on the next episode. Then you got a little longer road to hoe. We are lazy. Mm-hmm extremely lazy Mm -hmm. lee thank you uh for this question thank you for always supporting the show always look forward to seeing you when you're in vegas love hanging out with you brother and glad to hear that you are doing this thing even though it is inconvenient even though the tell all things not exactly your jam um but you're leaning in man and you're doing the work and it's one of those things where you get out of it what you put into it and i know sometimes it can be a little bit distracting like i always warn my my patients if you saw me in person, if we were sitting face-to-face and you were on the couch and I was on the chair, you would notice me holding a notepad and a pen. 
And while we're talking, I would look down and very conspicuously be writing things about what we're talking about. And you'd notice that, but you'd expect it. That's normal therapist behavior. Mm -hmm. In Zoom land, I'm still writing notes. Yeah, it looks like you're on your phone. Right, but I'm not going (laughs) to look down. I'm I'm not holding a notepad um, because I write notes in my system. It's on my computer. So you will notice that my eyes are hopping a little bit from left to right. I'm not, you know, browsing the internet. I'm not, you know, looking at weird stuff here. I'm not playing solitaire. I'm just writing notes. Um, but that's going to be part of it. It's a little bit of a different experience. But I prep people with that so they know what to expect with my eyes, where they're moving, what I'm doing. So anyway, I'm glad you're sticking to it. Uh, I think it gets better, and I'm glad that uh, you're not giving up on it, Lee. So keep leaning in, man. Keep doing the damn thing. Um, and I'm glad to see you following through with it. I hope it gets more natural over time. As we wrap up the show, we want to remind you that you can sign up at patreon.com slash therapy. You can get the extended show ad-free a day earlier as well as enjoy our live chat Discord community and our weekly deep dives, interviews, skill shares, research roundups, and rants. This Monday, I released the third installment of my series on questions every therapist should ask themselves, uh, as written by the great late Dr. Carl Rogers, uh, where I explain his theory. I read from his book and then also uh, apply it to my life and then try to apply it to any listener's life, regardless if they're a therapist. Um, using those therapeutic skills uh, for their own advantages. Check that out. And we want to thank our new Patreons who support the show. Who's new to the Theraparty, Nick? We got a new uh, two new Therapods. Welcome to the show, Dale the King and Wolfie05. Woo-hoo! Also, um, we got to go back for a second. Apologies section. Whoa, we haven't opened up that bitch in a long time. We have not. Wow. Uh, let, me, let me play the, uh, the oh, Apologies yeah. music. I forgot we have yes. music for this. Yes. Oh, this is beautiful. God, that takes me back. Oh, Damn, we're remember sorry. when we used to do this every week? Sorry. <laughs> we're sorry. 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 We here so at Pod sorry. Therapy, we're sorry. So sorry. I have a very special uh, apology to a listener who I'm not going to name sorry. on the show. Yeah. Sorry. But this listener had informed us that they were going to be in town yes. and wanted to possibly meet up with us. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Schedules didn't work out very well. Um, however, I had said, hey, I'm, I'm available so under this certain time period. Uh, and the writer's like, awesome, Persona cool. Me. Um, should I just email you or DM you on Discord? It's like, hey, just send me a DM on Discord. Mea culpa. And I didn't realize Dr. Shane. I have to accept Donde a esta message. la biblioteca. I had to accept <laughs> a message great, <laughs> on Discord. <laughs> you didn't know how to do that? I didn't know I had to. Oh. I thought it would just pop up and no. there'd be a notification. Yeah. There isn't. No. So I just now saw that five minutes ago. Oh, just saw it. Saw oh, it. Oh no. Oh yeah. And yeah. so I just replied to it, and I feel terrible because I definitely would have met in up. Your, in your defense, I, I don't see those either. Like a lot of times, I don't get or I don't notice those notifications. So like, if yeah. I'm not already friends with the person and we're not already talking. I may not see the DM. So yeah. yeah, I'm with you. So, I had no idea this happened. So, so if listener, anybody has ever sent me a, a direct message on Discord, <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't see your message. Bienvenidos. I didn't know that messages on Discord were a thing yeah, until just they now. Are. Mm. So I'm sorry, listener. Deep. I apologize. I promise I, I, wasn't, I was not trying to ignore you. We're to sorry. Discord. We're sorry for not knowing how your software works. Hmm. But to be Sponsor fair, the show, I story. think like a more like a bigger notification. I would think that would be <laughs> fun. Like, if it made noise. Yeah, like I think you should do something. Yeah, Speaking whatever. of visiting Vegas, if you're ever visiting Vegas, um, it's always good to ping us if you're a listener of the show and just let us know, hey, we're going to be in town. Yeah. Um, this is our agenda. That's always a great idea. We, we you know, may not always get there, but there's four hosts. And, you know, historically... Yeah, somebody might be bored and be like, yeah, sure, where are you? Fucking I'll come hang out. So it does happen. If you are a therapist uh, and you are visiting Vegas and you are in town, fuck you. You, you need to contact oh. us because we'll bring you on the Sorry. goddamn show. I would, like, yeah, we'll, we'll put you to work. That. So if you're ever yeah. in town, um, except for Tonka Truck the Pony, because I really want the horse. You know, I mean, Emma's cool, but Tonka, that's the get, you know, not trying to get Emma. Mm-hmm. So. Bring the horse, Emma. 
We'd also like to thank the benevolent, revered, generous, and flagrantly pro-therapy diehards who love you all so much. Oh, I'm sorry. We just got a, an email oh, no. from Tonka. Oh, no. Uh, I, I had actually emailed Tonka to see if they wanted to come on the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. What's uh, the word? I'm, I'm afraid they clopped twice. Oh, shit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yep. Tonka, you pretentious bitch. Yep. <sighs> it's no, no, it's a horse. Yeah. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. Mayor? Is that it? There you go. Pretentious mayor? That's something like that. Uh, the Thera Partners, thank you, Dirty B, and thank you, Pickett. And we want to especially thank our bosses, the mysterious and shrouded Illuminati members of the fan club, their producers. Thank you, Jake Schneider, Myra, Robert Brownie Jr. Mint, Smitty Scoop, Ben Dawn, Judy Schneider, Kayla Lansbury, Mrs. and Mr. Hot Dog Scoop, Malia, Leon Kassab, Mason Mitch, Mason Miller, Richard Macy, Richard fucking Macy, Carolyn Albert, Kevin Chamberlain, Tess Miller, Sammy Scoop, Ben Stanley slapping your face, Sarah Smith, Adam Hathaway, Byler T, Mike Helm, Paris Smith Cone, Darren Cunningham, Lib, Team Monaco, Thunder, Cougar, Falcon, Scoop, Matt Lisa Tangerman, Hell, Oscar Swan Rose, A Sunny Boy, Slippy Kai, Motherfucker, Sandra McWaffle, Dan Martin, Hannah Marie, Andrew Langmead, Bug Nuts, and Emma Kane, a.k.a. the mother of Tonka Truck the Pony. And if you would like to hear this episode uncut and unedited, and why wouldn't you? And enjoy our spontaneous side projects, go to patreon.com slash therapy, and thank you for supporting mental health. That's all the time we've got for this week's session. Coming up in December, the Pudding Pie <laughs> Fuckfest. Wait, what? Pie? You uh, <laughs> want to thank our landlords, Matt Manley's Ice Cream Social Podcast. <laughs> and thanks weird. to those of you who contributed to The word pie is definitely the word that confused me the most. I don't know, I needed most. alliteration, and I just I panicked. We Fuckfest really... didn't even bother me. It was just pie. I was like, well, what? <laughs> I'm glad that's the one you took issue with. Uh, you can sign up at patreon.com slash therapy. Follow us on the socials if you can find us. Who cares? Uh, tag us when you share this episode with others, which I hope you're doing every single week. And otherwise, give us money. Patreon.com slash therapy. And do you want to submit a question to the show? Ask anonymously at podtherapy.net or email us at podtherapyguys at gmail.com. I'm Nick Tangerman. I'm the soon-to-be-restored Dr. Jim Jobin. Thanks. Bye, and we'll see you for your appointments Bye. next week. Ten million dollar question. Okay, uh, let's do uh, let's do five points a piece. Okay, oh, for the last four. It's keeping it. Oh, we got four. Okay, right, last let's go four. for it. I think I'm first this time, right? This is round yes. three. Yeah. Yep.